are deep to take the kick of Nick Mahalik. Western Michigan put 57 on the board against Georgia State last week. Their only loss, a 51-17 setback at East Lansing to Michigan State. And we're underway from the dome. And this will be Riley. Seventh in the ACC in kick returns and out to the 20 and the ball popped loose. But Riley, I believe, was ruled down and indeed he was after an 18 yard return. So here is the sophomore, Cedar Grove, New Jersey, Tommy DeVito and this orange offense, Roddy, that surprisingly finds itself at just better than 318 yards a game, which is really toward the bottom 15 of Division I football. Certainly not what they expected coming into this season, and Tommy DeVito's development is going to be a big story for this Syracuse offense. He's a guy that played in eight games a year ago, so Syracuse fans were familiar with his work, looked good, but has not looked quite as comfortable early in this season. Typical Syracuse look, four receivers, three scattered here to the near side. Nakeem Johnson, Taj Harris, John Riley, leaving Tristan Jackson to the far side, and a keep by DeVito for a yard. Drake Spears, part of this defense that Lou Esposito coordinates for Tim Lester. Now Western Michigan defensively allowing better than 400 yards a game. DeVito fakes the toss and he'll keep it. Big, big hole for DeVito. One guy to beat is Claiborne and Tommy DeVito down to the 21. Great fake. By Tommy DeVito gets the linebackers moved out of the box and then he just takes off up the middle. Wes, this is not something they have shown a lot of early in the season, the run game of Tommy DeVito. They showed it a lot last year with Eric Dungy, but Tommy DeVito, a more than capable runner when he has the football in his hand. 60 yard carry for DeVito and now a flag is thrown on the quick snap by the orange and it's a procedure penalty. Full start, offense, number 86, a five yard penalty. First time. The referee today, Luke Richmond, and a Mid American Conference crew. And the penalty is on Tristan Jackson, the Michigan State transfer for Dino Babers, now in his fourth season, native of San Diego, California. 56 wins in eight years as a head coach. First carry of the day from Bo Neal. And he'll pick up a couple after the five yard penalty. It's interesting. We've seen three plays from Syracuse so far, three runs to start the game. It's a Syracuse offense that really needs to get the rush offense going, only averaging 92 yards per game so far in this season. Second and a dozen for DeVito. O'Neal on the cutback. Inside the 10, touchdown. Second rushing score of the year for Neal. Puts the orange on the board. Four plays, 81 yards, leads to a touchdown, all on the ground. You could tell when we talked to him yesterday, Dino Babers was a little on edge about how this run game has been early in the season. It's about as good as a start as you can ask for. The Groza Award winner, Andre Schmidt. And the try good. Didn't take the orange long. Four snaps. DeVito a career best 60 yarder. And then Neal punches it in from 23. Hang the average after the opening drive. You go four went. plays 86 yards. <laughs> All rushes. That'll get you close. Yep. And had to pay themselves back five for the penalty. So now all of a sudden, momentum can be curious when you've had a hard couple of weeks. Dino Baber's team has secured it with that opening salvo. Yeah, and establishing the run is going to help open up a lot for Tommy DeVito later in this game. The number five kick returner in the country is Keith Mixon. And he'll bring it out. Mixon 15, 20, and to the 24. Transfer from Mississippi State gives John Wasick and the Broncos a nice setup. Well, this is the long 60-yard 60-yard run by Tommy DeVito, and watch these two guys when the sweep fake 
comes on the outside. They fly across the field. You get a couple of good blocks from the offensive lineman, and Tommy DeVito runs well enough where you give him a little bit of room. I think he kind of caught Western Michigan a little bit by surprise with his speed. That set up the touchdown drive from Syracuse. Levante Bellamy, sidecar left to John Wasick, the veteran quarterback. Takes the throw on first down, and that is Eskridge. Two-way player for the Broncos, and there is a look at the senior making his 21st career start from Grand Rapids, Michigan. John Wasick, one of the best quarterbacks in the country so far this year. Top 10 in total QBR. You see that at the bottom, number eight in the country. He's been incredibly efficient early in this season. Strong throw to the two-way player Eskridge and a first down. Play fake Bellamy inside route. Eskridge couldn't hang on that time. And that was Christopher Frederick covering from behind for the orange. Two plays, they go to Eskridge twice. It's just a little slant. You see the close coverage there by Frederick. And this is a Syracuse secondary that came up and challenged Clemson at the line of scrimmage played a lot of man-to-man -man coverage expect to do them to do the same thing here today against Western Michigan Bellamy the running back to the bottom of your screen Wasik wants to take the shot for Eskridge in stride into the 24 yard line Antoine Cordy was there and Eskridge is shaken up on the play for the Broncos 43 yard throw to the explosive Dwayne Eskridge. And we're going to take a timeout as they're bluffed in Indiana. Dwayne Eskridge, who just caught a 43 yard pass from John Wasink, is help from the field. And Roddy, this is quite a collision at the end. Well, they targeted him on each of the first three plays. This time he's in the slot, just runs a slot fade. Gets down the field, gets behind Frederick the corner, and then gets driven into the ground by Antoine Cordy, the safety. You see him land hard on that shoulder. They were looking at it, and he's going straight to the locker room, Wes. So Eskridge on his way to the locker room. It's lost for the Broncos. The Broncos wanted to get hit ten times at least today, according to Lester. This is going to be a huge loss. He went for 240 yards receiving last year against Syracuse and is starting the game at cornerback. Yeah, and arguably their top corner man. Maybe puts even a more, more of a premium on this particular possession for Tim Lester in the offense. And now an offensive lineman is shaken up on the play. And Looks like that the is tight the tight end, Brett Borski. They like some of that. 22 personnel Roddy from time to time and Borski this backup he's the number two tight end to Giovanni Ricci their headliner and now Borski is shaken up on the play Borski is one of the guys that makes this offense so versatile he and Ricci the two tight ends as you said they love to put them on the field together and that a 22 two back two tight end or 12 one back two tight end personnel groupings it makes it really tough for a defense to to keep one personnel group on the field as well because two tight ends makes it so you can run over with Ricci yep. splitting out. He can run like a receiver as well. So Borski would be another big loss on back to back plays. Comes across the line tries to get that lamb block and you can tell the collision with Kendall Coleman looks like it's what did it kind of goes over and he was paying special attention to that right arm, it looks like. 6'6, 275 pounds from just outside Chicago is Brett Borski. Got two catches on the year. Ricci is the guy who they really lean on at tight end, but Borski's got a couple of catches and a score already for Coach Lester. So tough injuries here for Western Michigan to overcome on this opening drive. Eskridge after a 43 yard catch and now Borski goes down. They've so, got Ricci to the bottom of the screen here lined up against the cornerback. The guy we just talked about. And looking toward Ricci. The throw and can't come up with it with Christopher Frederick defending. 
There is a flag down on the play, and it might be for an eligible. An eligible receiver downfield, offense, number 76. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. So fourth down it'll be after the penalty against Jalen Moore. Yeah, Wes, it looks like it's the left tackle right here, Jalen Moore, and watch where he is when this ball is thrown. Works up to the linebacker. He's about, oh, it's only seven yards downfield. That's on the quarterback, guys. On an RPO, you cannot hold on to the ball that long or else you're always going to have your offensive lineman down the field. Well, also, here it is, Bellamy out of the backfield. Frederick hemmed him up, but Bellamy keeps driving, and I'll tell you what, he might be just a step shy of the first down here, guys. Certainly will, and Eric, you talked about on the quarterback, it looked like Giovanni Ricci on the previous play also had a late jump off the ball, didn't really get downfield against Christopher Frederick. Western Michigan's leaving the offense on the field here in fourth and short. I I'm okay with this call, Ronnie. Absolutely. Early in the game, you're down by seven. This is going to be a game of touchdowns, not field goals. Right. Five for five on the year of the Broncos on fourth down. Bellamy to catch, got knocked down. Big time play, Evan Foster. Caught him right at the point of the catch and got enough of a tough guy to get on the ground, Levante Bellamy. This is a tough one on the running back because the momentum of the ball is taking you towards the sideline. Watch Evan Foster, number nine, works through the pick, and all he has to do is shove Levante Bellamy out of bounds. And he's able to get the big stop for Syracuse on a fourth down. With the way they moved the ball down the field on the last drive west, four plays over 80 yards. This could be a huge turn of events here, missing that on fourth down. Seven play drive ends on downs as Tim Lester who played his college ball in Kalamazoo for the Broncos and now back as their head coach in his third year. DeVito handing the ball on the perimeter, Nikeem Johnson, who's had kind of a slow start to 2019, gets a touch of it, shoved out of bounds by Tranquil, the safety. So Justin Tranquil all over the field. It'll be interesting how he plays now with Eskridge out at that boundary corner. They put in Patrick Lupo, number four, to replace him. So we may see Eskridge, or excuse me, we may see Tranquil moving around to help out on that backside. DeVito to throw. Taj Harris. And he slips out of a arm tackle of Curtis, but can't stay in bounds. It's interesting, Roddy. The orange... Amba Etatawa, Steve Ishmael, Jamal Custis. And look, they, they've had some guys. Tristan Jackson's gotten off to a good start. But nobody's gone and taken the ball at their receiving spot like those three guys have for Dino Babers. Absolutely. And you think in this offense, one of these guys is bound to do it. Quick throw, Harris a catch. He'll be shy of the first down stick by about a yard. And there is Lou Pro kind of coming in to fill that boundary corner spot that was left by Eskridge. Well, they put a lot of pressure on that boundary corner and it's just a little come in hook up in the zone and Lupro makes a good play on a fourth down to wrangle down Taj Harris. And here is Mixon now to take the punt of one of the best guys in the country Sterling Hoffricker who is second in the ACC with a 48 yard average and tied his career best last Saturday night here in the dome against Clemson with a 65 yarder. Look at this thing. Mixon smartly signals and makes the fair catch. Good thing they're putting a hard roof here at the dome. Hopbricker could kick it through it. Seven nothing. The orange in front. Five minutes old in this first period of play at the dome. Bellamy with Wasik in the backfield. And Levante Bellamy having a hard time getting cranked up. Runs right into Michael Jones, the linebacker. Freshman from the IMG Academy. Down in Florida. Kendall Coleman also involved. And Wes, we saw Brett Borski, the tight end, come out of the game on the last drive. They put in number 38, Tanner Mathias, 
in the game, still running that two tight end set. He's lined up next to Giovanni Ricci. And interesting, Syracuse has opted to play their base defense. Three linebackers in against the set. Here's Bellamy trying to hit the cutback, and boy, he got stacked by Antoine Cordy. Cordy's played enough football around here that he will stick you. He's thrust into action because number seven, Andre Sisco, is out of the game today with a lower body injury, so he takes over one of those safety spots. He's played all over the field. He's played corner, he's played nickel, now he's at safety, and he will, as you said, Wes, come up and hit you. He is a rare sixth year in college football. He received medical exemptions for the 16 and 17 season here at Syracuse. Wasik flips it to Bellamy. And makes one move, but not nearly enough for the first down. Andrew Armstrong, senior for the Orange, makes the stop. If Wasing didn't get rid of that ball, number 94, Alton Robinson was screaming off the edge. He beat Spencer Cans with ease off that edge. That's going to be something to follow. They are not going to be able to get in third and longs because they are not going to be able to take traditional five-step drops and go through all the progressions in the pocket versus him. Nick Mahalik will punt it away for Western Michigan, and the number one punt returner in the ACC is Sean Riley. Another high punt. Riley waits. Fair catch at the 26. Here's where the Orange will get started. Well, this is game one of our ACC Network triple header. Next, we'll send you to the Hard Rock in Miami Gardens, Florida, where the Canes put 60 and change up on Bethune-Cookman last week, and another ACC Mac contest awaits as Central Michigan is at Hard Rock Stadium. Then at 7.30 tonight, ACC and primetime football presented by Geico. Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck, Katie George are live at Tigertown. Number one Clemson and Will Healy's 49ers of Charlotte. Tell you what, I'm interested to see Jared Williams in that Miami game. He has been impressive early in the season, Wes. Third possession for the Orange. Roddy off their 26, and this is Todd or Tristan Jackson cutting it back upfield and close to a first down. Angled out of bounds by Alex Grace. Trashawn Howard also, or Hayward also over there. That's enough for the first. Syracuse has opted for quick passes and getting Tommy DeVito in the run game. Get your quarterback into the game early. The Rhino Chris Elmore is in, but they hand it to Mo Neal, who gets nine to the 45. Almost 10 on the play for Neal. Hayward tripped him up, and the Orange right on the line again. Aaron Service quickly over the football at center. And this is Neal punching it for the first down to the 48 49 yard line before Thomas makes the stop. This is the pace that Syracuse wants to play at. Offensive coordinator Mike Lynch told us that this week in practice he was behind Tommy DeVito every single snap telling him get on the ball snap it snap it. DeVito now just going to throw that away. Looked like they were trying to set up a screen for Tristan Jackson. Antonio Balabani born in Kosovo. A steady defensive end for Western Michigan was there to pressure DeVito. Yeah, it looked like one of those Western Michigan DBs was in the throwing lane, so DeVito wisely threw it away. Here's Neal, and the Broncos sort that out. And all of a sudden, it is third and maybe a little more than 10. Malabani again involved in that stop. Let's see if Western Michigan dials up pressure. The last couple weeks, Syracuse has really struggled against five-man blitzes, and it would be interesting to see if Esposito dials one up here. DeVito to throw. Going to take the shot for Taj Harris, and overthrown incomplete. He had Anton Curtis with him. Some of the partisans, I think, wanted to flag for some hand fighting here, Roddy. I think this was just great coverage by Anton Curtis. He's in the hip pocket. Oh, a little bit of a grab there that he got away with. <laughs> hey, Wes, that is a veteran move by a senior. You stay low, get the jersey, get a little grab, doesn't get called. No harm, no foul. Six plays and a punt now for Hoffrichter. <laughs> you can see why they wanted that yeah. play, but 
Hey, you keep it low. That, keep, that's the veteran moxie right there. Keep guys, it low. Is that the key, Aaron? Keep it low. Guys, the Broncos coaches were talking about Dwayne Eskridge really liking to talk on the field, almost have to pull him back. He's so physical. Anton Curtis is in every Syracuse's receiver's ear that he's near. Watch for that throughout the game. Mixon, did he cough it up? Syracuse comes out with it. Now one official saying it belongs to Western Michigan. Abdul Adams, the running back, came up with the ball here. Coming on the field is a muff punt recovered by Syracuse. His first down, Syracuse. So the ruling on the field now is that the Orange have it with Adams on the recovery. Let's take a look at this. You see Mixon. Looks like he's under it, but just goes right through his arms. Never has possession of the ball while he's on the ground. And it's five on one trying to recover it. Syracuse Orange with a big toe. You see that ball moving around. Good call by the referees getting that one right. Syracuse gets new life. Orange from the 17. And you see Abdul Adams who recovered the punt. Fumble by with a couple of yards on first down. DeVito, quick shot, and the catch made. And that's Aaron Hackett. He and Chris Elmore tandem at the tight end spot, although Hackett looks a little bit more like a tight end, 234 pounds. Elmore, almost 300 pounds, listed as a tight end. Well, Elmore's the guy you want to run behind. He'll throw it to Hackett, though. Played in all 13 games last year. DeVito shoots it inside. Here's Aaron Hackett. Touchdown. Interesting, two of their biggest plays, the DeVito run on the opening drive, and that one come off these little sweep fakes and pitches and stuff. Yeah, we've seen it twice, and it's worked to success on both of them. This time, they fake the sweep and go with the little shovel pass to hack it underneath. Western Michigan's had a tough time defending that action. Just a three-play drive, snap high. Schmidt got it down and banged it through. So the turnover by the Broncos is cashed in for the score. See the muff Mixon punt could hang on. Mixon, yep. And the Orange takes the advantage to two scores here. All set up by the muff punt by that guy. Keep Mixon. See if he can make good. And Mixon will let this hit eight yards deep. Broncos will start from their 25. Well, we've seen that sweep action. You see Aaron Hackett right there, the tight end. They get the sweep action. Linebackers go flying. Hackett does a good job of cutting behind his block. Remember the last time they ran that action, it, ran, it led to the 60-yard run by Tommy DeVito. It'll be interesting to see how often they go back to it because Western Michigan has had a tough time dealing with that. True freshman Sean Tyler has come in the ball game with Wasik now. As the Broncos start this drive trailing 14 nothing off their 25. Quick throw here to the near side Jalen Hall. Fifth catch of the year for Hall and brought down by Scoop Bradshaw. It's kind of turned in the type of game that we thought it would with Syracuse being able to move down the field taking advantage. Western Michigan moved down an inch drive not able to get points out of it but be interesting the response here by Western Michigan how they come out being down two scores. Wasik tried to dump it in the flat to Tyler and a flag is thrown and this might be a little extra on Alton Robinson. It definitely is. Rough in the passer. Defense number 94. 15 yard penalty and automatic first down. This can happen to a defensive end. He gets frustrated by how quickly the ball is getting out of his hands. And you see here, 
Alton Robinson just comes in late not a huge shot on the quarterback but in today's football that'll be a penalty every time I, I believe number 94 just frustrated how quickly that ball is getting out play after play Eric you're right because he beat left tackle Jalen Moore excuse me the right tackle Spencer cans really easily it's frustrating for those guys when they can't get their hands on the quarterback as you said Tyler who had a big run last week for a touchdown against Georgia State held to a yard there by the way the linebacking play Lakeem Williams comes in with 26 tackles Andrew Armstrong 17 and he's played well here in the first handful of possessions of this ball game both of those guys have played well and they played well last week to be completely honest with you Wes against Clemson as well right. less than 100 yards rushing going into the fourth quarter it ended up getting out of hand a little bit in the fourth, but those guys have all played well, as well as Evan Foster, we see now rolling down into the box. It's mixing in motion. Wasik going to set, take the deep shot. Downing one up deep, and it got broken up. I believe Cordy might have gotten a hand on it, and it looked like Scoop Bradshaw was in coverage. This is not the game that Western Michigan wants to play today, relying on hitting these deep shots down the field. Their game is more timing-based. That ball a little underthrown by John Wasik. Actually, probably pretty fortunate that it's not picked off. They teed up 6-4 Jalen Hall. And now 0 for 2 on third down are the Broncos. Devon Tucker, 24-year-old senior in the backfield with Wasik. And now illegal procedure. Ball start. Offense. Number 61, five-yard penalty, third down. That's the junior Mike Caliendo making his 27th start today for the boys from Kalamazoo. The Broncos have an experienced offensive line. Four juniors surround Luke Jiriga in the middle, who's playing his 43rd consecutive start here today. Uncharacteristic move by them there. Wasik. Slings it. Ricci the tight end. First down and more. Took a big lick from Foster. But Giovanni Ricci, a talented, talented prospect at tight end with a big catch. Well, it's an incredible job by Wasink of just climbing in the pocket. The two defensive linemen about hitting high fives in the backfield. They got they beat the offensive lineman so quick, the two tackles, but he climbs in the pocket, finds Ricci. And the Syracuse defensive coaches told us Ricci's the guy that they are the most worried about. He's a matchup problem, and Wasink loves to go to him, particularly in big situations. Senior from Loveland, Ohio, with a big conversion. Inside route, they try to go back to Jalen Hall. And Scoop Bradshaw made the play over the top. Now, Hall getting a lot more reps because of the Eskridge injury that we saw in the opening drive. But that is also a two way go because he was one of their top players at corner as well. He was, and Scoop Bradshaw getting a lot of run because Fatu Melifonwu, the starting corner for Syracuse, also out for this game. Two guys in the Syracuse secondary are out. Now, Western Michigan gets back into their 12 personnel set with one back and two tight ends. That's Ricci, the tight end, in motion. Wasson for Hall. Made the catch, backs out of bounds, first down against Trill Williams, who had a pick last week of Trevor Lawrence. 19 yard throw here. Well, when you want a big drive, you go to your senior quarterback and rely on him. And even though there's a little bit of a slip there by Hall, what a throw on the back hip by John Wasink. He's been really good in this drive, climbing in the pocket, finding Ricci on third down, and then there making a great throw He's, to Jalen Hall. He came in averaging over 10 yards an attempt. He's almost at 10, 8 of 12 for 113. Here's a direct snap to Bellamy. He'll cut back, dive, and fumble the ball, and it's recovered by the orange in the end zone. Christopher Frederick, after Bellamy coughed it up, now Bellamy's saying he was down. Luke Richmond and his crew huddle. On the field is a fumble recovered by Syracuse in the end zone for a touchback. The first it's coming out, Roddy. The ball is the without a doubt already out as he's trying to reach that ball out. Just slips out of his hands as he's going down to the ground. That's as cut and dried as they come. 
And it is going to be Syracuse ball. Another big turnover for this Western Michigan team after the muffed punt on the last drive leads to a Syracuse touchdown. Bellamy is going into the end zone. May not score, but they're going to have the ball on the one or two yard line. But it's fumbled into the end zone. Syracuse is going to have another shot. How about that? That is going to drive Coach Lester nuts for Western Michigan. He talked to us last night about how bad they struggled in the red zone against Michigan State and how he felt they had a real shot at winning that game or at least giving them a good ball game if they could have converted in the red zone. Now already today, 0 for 2. They go 4. Uh, they lose the ball on four downs on their first drive and fumble the ball into the end zone there after a great call with the Wildcat formation. Yep. Well, the other thing that they're going to check here. After further review, the ruling of a fumble recovered by Syracuse for a touchback is confirmed. First down, Syracuse. The other thing that you had to make sure was that he didn't cross the goal line with possession. The ball was out at like the one yard line, so that was for sure. Now we can update the tote board here. <laughs> this is one of the top turnover teams in the country a year ago. Created 31 turnovers, 18 games now with a takeaway. Incredibly impressive. Anybody position. on there surprise you though? Uh, Houston is surprising, I think, right? Mississippi State was fairly surprising too to me. Yeah. But Syracuse definitely not. Abdul Adams, boy, having a hard time getting away from Gilroy, the defensive end out of Ben Davis in Indianapolis, who hit him behind the line. And it will be second in the full 10 for the Orange. The Broncos, who went bowling last year for Tim Lester, lost to BYU in Boise, Idaho. Trying to get back to another postseason date. Flag in the backfield as the long throw is made, and that is Jackson. Tristan Jackson to catch, but I think we're going to have a hold here on the orange. Holding offense, number 68. It's a 10 yard penalty. Repeat, second down. That's Aaron Service making his 29th consecutive start today. Yeah, and it was against Andre Carter. You're going to see him loop around, gets matched up against service, gets beat on the second move. Just a little bit of a grab, takes him down. It's going to have Syracuse set up in second and long, wiping out a good play by the Orange. Another one of Eric Woods' single-digit defensive line guys. Single-digit D linemen, they make plays. <coughs> and, and is this my time to defend the offensive lineman and say that wasn't a hold? <laughs> out of the backfield, Adams. On the throw from DeVito, and there's another flag as Adams works his way toward the 30. But I think service might get ticketed again here. He certainly is. That's not going to make that guy happy at all, by the way. It won't, and that's why, as an offensive lineman, on screen plays, you're taught to cut block out Personal of space. Foul. Face mask, offense, number 68. Wow. Half the distance to the goal, beat second down. Doubles up here, Roddy. Yeah, he gets the face mask on this one. Just got a little high on the defender. It's a screen pass. You're going to see him coming out. Big number 68. How about him getting out of the way of the ball? But then trying to block Western Michigan defender and just kind of takes him down. And Eric, yeah, you, you are taught. It's a little bit harder in college football now because now there's no cut blocking further than five yards downfield. So if you're in that gray area, they may be coaching these guys to stay up now, making it a little bit harder for these big guys out in space against the, the, the little dancers in the secondary. You're exactly right, and that's right in that gray area right there. It might not have been five yards, but you don't want to take any chances. Now we got another personal foul here. Yeah, Riley out of bounds, and there might have been an extra shove. Patrick Lupro over there, number four. I'm going to play personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number four, the 15 yard penalty from the end of the run and an automatic first down. Unforced error here on the Broncos, going to give Syracuse the first down. Well, they're in second and a short bus ride. You get them stopped for not that big a gain, and Lupro, who's in for Eskridge, remember, just throws down Riley on the sideline. You can't do that in that situation. You're in a, you're in a situation where you're going to be able to get the ball back for your offense with a stop on a third and forever. DeVito squeezes out. Yeah, 
past the 30 to the 31, perhaps. Hayward from Ypsilanti went to Skyline. Makes the tackle for the Broncos. Both these defenses are being stressed, Eric and Roddy, by the multiplicity of what the offenses do today from each school. Being really stressed. DeVito, second down. And that's Jackson, another catch, stepping out of bounds near a first down. I think he'll be about a step and a half short. And I think, I think Western Michigan is being held a little bit in their defensive personnel by what Syracuse is doing here in this first half. Not a lot of running on and off by uh, Tim Lester's crew. Yeah, the tempo affects what you're able to do from a substitution standpoint. Here's Adams, and I think he will have it, and he does. Got the 38 before Drake Spears makes the tackle. And now Adams and Spears with a little checking on the health of one another. <laughs> you, you've already had a personal foul penalty. Extended drive essentially for Syracuse. Don't make it close anymore. Just get back to your side of the line of scrimmage. Don't cost your team. My man Chris Elmore's come back in for the orange. Here's a slip out to Sean Riley. And Ruled out at the 45 ahead of Lupro. I can't help but think that Lou Esposito may have his defense a little too fired up at this point. A lot of extra chatter from his defense and a lot of pushing and shoving. These guys are coming in here to get today to make a mark on this game. They felt like they had an opportunity to win last year, and they came in to win, and you see a lot of that intensity from this defense. That'll get us to the end of the first. A couple of turnovers by the Broncos have been very costly. DeVito engineering an opening TD drive. The fumble gave him another score. Jones, Eric Wood, West Durham. Uh, game one of our ACC Network triple header. Tommy DeVito engineering an opening drive score. A couple of turnovers by the Broncos and off that second one, here is the orange starting quarter two from its 44 on second down. And DeVito is sacked. Around the edge comes Timothy Collins. And Collins who gets chipped a little bit by the tight end, but just goes underneath the tackle, who's having to sort out that left side of that line, having to sort out who's going to take who. Lack of communication, and we saw this last week against Clemson as well. And Clemson brought people from the stands, it seemed like at times, but this offensive line had a tough time sorting out some of those blitzes. Collins, a veteran player at Tennessee Tech now in a grad year in Kalamazoo. DeVito back foot throw, what a catch by Abdul Adams. And Adams has the first down and more. Alex Grace finally shoved him out of bounds, but it's a heck of a throw by DeVito and a Pretty good catch from Adams. Well, we saw the speed of DeVito earlier. Now that you see the overall athleticism with him just falling away and shot putting it out to Adams. Really good play call there, setting up the screen on third and long. 21 yard play, first and 10. Another quick throw on the perimeter. And this is Nike Johnson, who has been targeted a couple times already in this first half. They're trying to get Johnson Roddy on track. This is a guy. Got a little pop in a 5-8 frame for Dino Babers' team. Yeah, and we haven't really seen this part of the orange offense so far this season. Just the quick throws to the sideline. We've seen it a lot here today. It allows them to get into their tempo and allows the receivers to get the ball in their hands in space to make plays. Tenth play coming up in the possession that started off the 20 after the Bellamy fumble. And here's the RPO to Johnson again. Boy, good pursuit that time. A.J. Thomas, a junior from Detroit. These quick throws to the sideline, that uh, running back screen you saw on third down, these plays are designed to help a struggling offensive line, and I love the concept so far from Mike Lynch. Yeah, I like how it's also gotten Tommy DeVito in a little bit of the rhythm. They've gotten him involved early and often. Here's DeVito. This is a keeper, and it's wide open. Tommy DeVito will score easily. Thirty 
six yards, Roddy. Eric, you just talked about helping out this offensive line. What's better than a little draw action on third down? You use the aggressiveness of the defensive line against them, and there is absolutely nobody once he crosses that first line of defense. I'm in DeVito skates in the end zone easily, and you get a little smile out of your coach when you show the burners up the sideline. Five carries, now 93 yards for Tommy DeVito, including the 36-yard run here. Point after from Schmidt. And the Orange pitching a shutout on Western Michigan here at the Dome. Duke been outscored 59-29 the first half this season. Leads Western Michigan 21 to nothing as we rejoin you from the Dome here in Central New York. to kick it away to Keith Mixon. And no return from Mixon. Broncos will scrimmage from their 25, and Roddy, the turnovers have been big. Well, they have absolutely killed this Western Michigan team. You see Keith Mixon with the muff punt. That led to a touchdown by the big tight end. And, excuse me, it led to a touchdown by Mo Neal. And then you get Levante Bellamy going into the end zone, fumbling the ball. There's also a personal foul penalty that extended that drive. And then eventually Tommy DeVito takes it 36 yards into the end zone. The turnovers, Tim Lester on that sideline has to be thinking. The turnovers have absolutely killed us. Our offense has moved the football, but the Orange have certainly taken advantage of it. John Wasick is veteran quarterback. Team that's first in the back and 26 nationally in total offense at 501 a game. And Wasick overthrows Ricci the tight end on first down. Well, there's not a 21-point score out there for the Broncos, but dare I say, Roddy, Eric, that Western Michigan probably here in the next 12-41 wants to get something on the board because Syracuse is starting to get that vibe a little bit of maybe what we expected to see from the Orange earlier in this season and still may very well get a lot of it before the season is done. We're getting some of it today. Here's Bellamy, and that's incomplete. So now very quickly, third in the full 10. Kendall Coleman, by the way, tracing Bellamy's steps, and that makes it tough. 55 cast by the shadow. It's actually probably pretty good that he dropped that ball. He said that Kendall Coleman was all over him. Western Michigan has struggled on these third and longs with the exception of the one where Wasi climbs and finds Ricci as tight end. Ricci lined up attached to the formation as an H-back right now. There he is. That's the guy he likes to go to in these situations. Watson crossed the field. Catch is made. That's Mixon. And that'll be a first down to the 46 for Western. Eric Coley the stop. We've seen a lot of man coverage in this situation from Syracuse. This time, good protection from the offensive line. It's zone. And Mixon is able to find a little soft spot over the middle. Senior quarterback delivers it. He's able to move the chains for this offense. 21-yard catch to Keith Mixon, Jr., the transfer from Mississippi State. And Alton Robinson moved, but Cans pointed him out. I'm not sure that he was in the neutral zone when either. Cans flinched. Right. Full start. Offense, number 70, the five-yard penalty, first down. Hey, Eric, you know what? If you're a right tackle by, like Spencer Cans, you know good and well all week it's been about Robinson and Coleman. You can't give them any freebies, though, if you're Western Michigan. No, you don't want to give them any freebies. And on third down, Jake Moreland, he utilized a double chip. That's how much respect he has for those two defensive ends. Both tackles got chips against number 94 and 55. Knocked away. Robinson and I think he got the recovery and it's still loose. It is recovered now. Who has it may be the better question. At about the 32. Syracuse does. Alton Robinson got in there and banged it out. Well, Eric talked about how good these guys were. 
in the open, although expected they got a third down, a great power move by Alton Robinson, just swats the ball out of John Wassing's hands, and then almost recovers it himself. The ball bounces around a little bit. The Syracuse Orange come up, and another turnover for Western Michigan in great field position for the Syracuse Orange to be able to get it, but an incredible play by a defensive lineman who's one of the best in the conference. Hasn't gotten off to the start that he necessarily would want, but it's because of the respect factor, but give him one-on-one, -on -one and he will take advantage of it, like on that play. Kenneth Rupp gets credit for the recovery. DeVito in the orange. And now, all of a sudden, a timeout is taken by the orange. Out. Syracuse, they're first. With 11.42 to play here in this Media first timeout. half. We'll take it with a third turn. NC State, and he was an assistant at Syracuse. So we're down to two. I know that Wes Durham, the mayor, knows this one. <laughs> There's a toss to Adams on first down. Do you know it? Zaire Barnes. I do not know. I'm guessing here. I am guessing Bud Wilkinson. Okay. Okay, we'll split the difference here in the booth. What You're you going to go Nick Saban? Where do you want to go, Ewood? Give me Bud Wilkinson because I think Wes knows it. Here is. DeVito going to throw for the end zone and offline for Jackson. Third and ten coming up for the orange. A.J. Thomas was trailing that, and so was Tristan Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got, you've got Syracuse in third and long. This is a team that was one for ten on third and seven plus a week ago against Clemson. This will be a huge stop for this Western Michigan defense. you got to stand up here and not allow a touchdown after the big turnover for another uh, for for a third time but Syracuse 10 for 34 in the last two ball games now you know Maryland you're playing uphill most of the day and last Saturday night you're playing one of the best in the country defensively they've had four straight third down conversions DeVito sacked and that is Palabani well that is an absolute huge play for this Western Michigan defense because not only do you get Syracuse off the field, you knock them out of Andre Schmidt, the Groza Award winner's field goal range. Balabani's able to beat the tackle, get around the edge, and now, instead of seeing the All-American Andre Schmidt, you see the All-ACC yeah. Sterling Hoprick to the punter. Who is a candidate for the Ray Guy Award, by the way. Keith Mixon stands at the 10. Hoffricker punt is fair caught at the nine. All right, let's get to the Aflac answer. Which prominent head coach never served as an assistant at Syracuse? Pete Carroll, Tom Coughlin, Nick Saban, or Bud Wilkinson? The answer? Pete oh. Carroll. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that one. You let me down, Wes. Bud Wil oh, thanks. Bud Wilkinson, the D O line coach, 1938 to 41. Nick Saban here, 1977. Tom Coughlin, 78 to 80, as the offensive coordinator. There you go. Wow, that was a good one, Jeremy. Nice job. Durham 0 for 2. <laughs> Jones 0 for 2 as well. Yeah, Jones 0 for 2. And Wood definitely 0 for 2. Watson back foot throw and almost flagged down by Deshaun Bussell. Young man from Knoxville, Tennessee, who originally committed to Tennessee under former head coach Butch Jones. And then when the coaching carousel started in East Tennessee, Tim Lester was Johnny on the spot to scoop him up. Well, Andrew Armstrong, the linebacker number 12, had a free run at the quarterback there. John Wasink had no choice but to go to his wide receiver on the long fade and wasn't able to complete it. Second in the full 10. Quick throw on the perimeter and bustle the catch, but brought down quickly by Scoop Bradshaw. This is where Wasink feels more comfortable with those quick play action fakes and then throwing the ball on the timing routes underneath 10 yards. Syracuse has largely pressed up and taken away those easy throws and made Wasink go down the field. See if they dial up pressure here and go back to that. Both corners pressed up on the edge, so I would expect some pressure. Two of four is Western. Here's the throw. Bustle, the intended receiver, who makes a heck of a catch. 
dropped it right in over the top of Scoop Bradshaw. What a catch by the redshirt freshman Deshaun Bustle. It's a good release off the line. He holds his line, gives his quarterback a lot of room to throw the ball off to the sideline, and an absolute dime by John Wasink over the outside shoulder. That's an indefensible play. You throw a ball like that and there's nothing a defender can do. Fantastic by Wasink. You see why he's top 10 in the country in QBR so far this year. The wide receivers coach at Western Michigan, Keith Gaither, coach Willie Sneed at Ball State. He knows what good players are, and here is Bellamy down the near sideline and a home run ball from Western Michigan. We talked about how dangerous Levante Bellamy was at the top. I, I want to give credit to the defense on this. You have a turnover on the last drive, get a sack on third down to push him out of field goal range, give the ball back to your offense, and all Levante Bellamy needs is a small crease. The guy who run, was timed at 428 on a laser time 40 this summer burns down the sideline, and that is a huge swing in momentum coming off of this stop now to a Western Michigan touchdown. Caps for the point after, and it is good. So Levante Bellamy, who took off last week on Georgia State, puts points on the board for Western here today against the Orange. On the last drive for Syracuse, Tommy DeVito takes a sack, and one of the biggest issues with the offense this year has been taking sacks. That's their 15th sack given up this season. But if you notice, he takes the sack at 10 yards. He is not climbing in the pocket, and for tackles, that is extremely tough because you can't block those angles. You can't block a defensive end that is rushing to 10 yards up the field. So look for them to coach him up and get that fixed on this possession. A kick, by the way, from Mahalik. Skips back to Riley on a bounce, and now he tries to beat the leverage to the far side. And Riley will be taken out, and a flag will be thrown at the 16. A little overzealous on the pursuit, Western Michigan. Once Riley hit the strike. Second time Western Michigan's been flagged for this. Oh, I'm not so After sure the play, about that. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, late hit on a bounce. Kicking team, number 25, a 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, an automatic first down. It looked like more of Harrison Taylor than it was the play of uh, Kareem Ali. Yeah, and that, and that one's one that's borderline. I don't mind the call. Sean Riley clearly did step out of bounds before he's hit, but it's 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 close either way. Let's yep. just let's just say that. Orange seventh possession from its 31. And here's DeVito with Mo Neal and this three to the field, one to the boundary look that Dino Babers is really kind of a base set for his offense. And there is Neal picking up five on first down as we go under nine minutes to play. Stephon Claiborne, the stop. And, and to go back to Eric's point about Tommy DeVito's depth, that was one of those things to definitely look at. He mentioned climbing in the pocket. That's something they've really worked on with DeVito. And a turnover by Neal and recovered by the Bronx, Anton Curtis. Tossed it to Neal on a sweep. And it looked like Mo Neal never had it. by Western Michigan, first down. Just a little pitch to Mo Neal. And you're right, Wes, he never really had a grip on it. And then there was never really a shot for Neal to recover that ball as it was bouncing the around. The fit of a fumble recovered by Western Michigan is under further review. And the reason they're gonna look at this is because if that ball is pitched forward, then it's gonna be considered a forward pass rather than a fumble. I don't know, Roddy. It, it looked like the shot that we got, the all-22, it looked like that was right down the line at best, and you see Lou Esposito on the sideline fired up. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Doesn't take much to get Lou going, by uh, the way. No, sir. Andrew Panucci, by the way, is the replay official. Oh, check out the belt. Here today at the Dome. Check out the belt. You get a turnover, you get the belt, you go over to the social media team, and you do it for the gram, Wes. Is that what happens? Yeah, do it for the ground. Got it. Here's the best look we have. I, 
Yeah, and that's I, I think that's pretty clear that it's backwards. He's juggling the ball on the ground. Western Michigan recovers. Turnovers have been the story of this game, though, partner. Yes, they have. The muff punt, the fumble into the end zone, the strip sack, and then the big stop off the strip sack. And now Western Michigan finds themselves in a situation where they're the beneficiary, potentially. Right. In a good position to put points on the board. Now, remember, they lost Dwayne Eskridge, their outstanding two way player. Further review, the ruling of a fumble recovered by Western Michigan stands. First down. They lost Dwayne Eskridge, their outstanding two way player for the ball game on the opening drive. Third or fourth play of the ball game itself. Not only one of their best receivers, most explosive receiver, also their top corner. And then a backup tight end also was lost in that opening possession. So Western then couldn't capitalize and turn the ball over. They moved the ball pretty well all yeah. in all. The turnovers are what's really killed them. Syracuse has scored touchdowns. Two of the Orange's three scores have come off turnovers. See if they can repay the favor after the first turnover by Syracuse today. And that is the third fumble of the year, by the way, by the Orange. Eric, is, you got a guest as well. Yeah, I'm down here on the field with Eric Dungey, who lit up the Broncos last year and led Syracuse to 10 wins. Eric, Tim Lester recruited you to Syracuse, and you got Syracuse gear on today. Are you rooting that Tim has a good day against your Cuse, or, or what are your feelings about today? You know, I, I hope his offense does well. It's tough. I'm in a weird spot. You know, I wouldn't be here without him, but obviously I'm a Syracuse native now, so I'm going for Syracuse. But um, it was just great to see him before the game, and I'm very happy. I'm blessed to, you know, be in this position because of him. Absolutely. You spent uh, this training camp in the NFL, and you're still working on your pro career. Give us all an update on what you're up to now. Yeah, so I'm just, you know, waiting for an opportunity. I uh, worked out with the Browns. I was very thankful for it. Just kind of hoping for a chance. All I need is a chance, and I'm excited to, you know, play quarterback at the next level. So. Yeah, and we all wish you the best with that. And have you talked to Tommy DeVito? It's still so early in the season, and they sit at one and two, and there was high expectations into this coming into this year. Have you talked to DeVito or any of the guys on the team about that? You know, I, I work out there still, and I'm, I'm around all the guys all the time, and uh, still talk to Nike Johnson, Taj Harris, the receivers. And I see DeVito every now and then. He's he's focused. He's in the film room, luckily. Um, so I'm not seeing him too much. But the receivers, for the most part, you know, they're still coming to me, which is awesome, and I'm just giving them input and. Um, you know, they just told them to keep their heads up. You know, you know, no one expected, expected them to win against Clemson. They got a long season ahead of them, and I think they can still do great. You see what they're doing right now, and they're finally starting to find themselves getting that rhythm, and I'm excited for the rest of the season for them. Great. Thanks for your time, Eric. Thank you. Ewood, thanks. Here is Wasik on the keeper on first down, spinning inside the 10, and it'll be first and goal for the Bronx. Lakeem Williams saved the touchdown on a 13-yard run. Well, the guy we expect to run at quarterback is standing on the sideline with Eric Wood, but we've seen Tommy DeVito and now John Wasik with the spin cycle. How about that? On number eight, Antoine Cordy. It's a great move by a quarterback. A little bit of athleticism. So now first and goal, and Tucker has come in the pistol with Wasik. And Tucker the carry, but the Orange will not budge. By the way, Eric Dungy, some kind of competitor at the QB spot. He's one of the guys, when we talked to the Western Michigan coaches, they said he's one of those guys that you absolutely love when he's on your team. Yeah. When he's on the other team, he's one of the guys that you want out of the game because he is annoying. He chirps at you, and he is one heck of a competitor. Also a great athlete as well. Second and goal. Wasik wants to throw more. Cannot haul it in. Defended by Cordy. Sky Moore, who had an unbelievable catch at Michigan State, was put up to bat there by his quarterback. I was not able to elevate. Really good play by Cordy in man to man coverage. It looks like Tim Lester's going to take a timeout and get the right play. This place might not be full, but it doesn't have to be full to get loud. So wants to make sure that his offense is on the same page. 21 7. Broncos trying to get within a score when we come back. Matchup that's favorable, maybe split out to the bottom of the screen, try and get him on a linebacker and throw the ball here because if you don't get it on third down, I'm still going for it on fourth down. This is four down territory. 
That's Bellamy shifting left to right. And Levante Bellamy stacked up, no gain. 94, Alton Robinson, first guy there. They off to go with the run. Syracuse just absolutely dominates. You see Robinson getting in front of Tanner Mathias, just absolutely blowing that play up in the backfield. Western Michigan still has the offense on the field. Once again, you got to have your best play here. It's fourth and two on the two yard line. This is the two point play that you practice all week long. That's the tight end, Ricci. Wasik will push it, throw for Ricci. Touchdown for the Broncos. Fourth touchdown catch of the year for Giovanni Ricci. This is the two point play that everybody has in their repertoire. Finds Ricci when you have a big tight end who runs routes like a receiver. He is the go to target down near the red zone. You do a great job of finding him. And Caps point after is no good. So Thiago Caps, the Brazilian, missed the point. Well, here's the touchdown, and you see Ricci there. He's going to get ahead of steam and get two picks on the outside and man to man coverage. Andrew Armstrong, the linebacker, gets matched up on him. He's got to go over all the traffic. Every team has this in their playbook the little natural pick rub routes that you get on the edge. Ricci's able to catch the ball, get it in the end zone. Really good play call from Tim Lester. And you could tell with that third down run that he was thinking he was saving that one for fourth down. That's a break glass in case of emergency play. <laughs> if you need a big two point conversion or you need a big touchdown on a fourth down, that's the one that you go to. You know, it's interesting. We talked about Giovanni Ricci earlier about not only an outstanding player in the in the Mac, but a guy whose prospects for the next level, Roddy, are pretty good. Eric, I've been impressed with his ability to be a willing blocker as well. In what they're doing in the run game with Levante Bellamy and Sean Tyler and and whatnot for the Broncos. You're right, Giovanni Ricci is the total package. There was multiple pro scouts here today. I asked them who they were looking at, and he came up on both of their lists as a guy that they're targeting for the next level. Converted wide receiver starts at 210 pounds, gains 30 pounds, gets up to 240. But beforehand, he was a core special teams player. Ah. Those guys convert well to the next level. So a couple of touchdowns, but the missed extra point, and now Mahala kicks it out of bounds. So a missed kick, and now the penalty for a ball out of bounds, and now we got a little more extracurricular in front of the orange bench, which may push this first snap over midfield. This is on Western Michigan. It'll be the third personal foul penalty after the play against this Broncos team. Luke Richmond is our referee from the Mac. There are two fouls on Western Michigan. Free kick out of bounds. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 42. Both penalties will be enforced. It'll be first down Syracuse. And at midfield. So it will be at the 50. Roy McCree, 42 there, the guy who might have been in the uh, Extra shove and push. There he is, right on the 30 yard line. Let's take a look at him. Doesn't quite like the way that went down. And then, whoa. It's always the second guy that gets caught. I didn't think that, I didn't think the early shove was, was too bad, but then you get the retaliation and McCree cost his team. That's 45 free yards that Western Michigan has given this Syracuse team because of extracurriculars after the play. So now DeVito in the orange got to answer up eight here under five to play in the half DeVito deep drop he'll sling it out of bounds Riley the closest receiver in the neighborhood you guys talked about these deep drops earlier he was already deep when the snap occurred and then he retreats to cause a, even more of a disadvantage for his offensive line, Roddy. And I think they're trying to set up a screen there, so obviously you're going to get pass rush on that one, but the deep drops 
have been an issue. They're expecting him to climb in the pocket a little bit to help out that line. Here's Hackett already a touchdown catch today. Chopped down by Zaire Barnes. So it'll be third and about halfway for the Orange. Syracuse came in bottom four in the ACC in the four major offensive team categories. Total rush, pass, and score. You'd have had that Syracuse before the season. You don't want a lot of money. Yep. Here's the throw and the catch. Tristan Jackson, first down. Muscles his way to the 31 of Western. Tranquil the stop of the wide receiver and the transfer from Michigan State. And here goes the pace. Toss to Bo Neal. Tries to slide to the right, and he'll get a yard out of it. And we've got a player from the orange shaking up, and it looks like Ryan Alexander, the grad transfer from South Alabama, who started at right tackle today. Now, this offensive line, guys, is already in a little bit of chaos due to the injury to Sam Heckle. Today, starting Aaron Service at the pivot, Carlos Veterello is uh, the left tackle, Evan Adams at the left guard, Dakota Davis is the right guard, and Ryan Alexander drawing the start at the right tackle spot. So the question for Syracuse is what do they do if Alexander can't continue or if he's got to take a couple plays off who slides over to right tackle because as you said yeah. one injury to your center and they've had to shuffle around the whole line. I'm going to take a look at what happened to Alexander as they tend to him on the field. He's there on the left side of your screen you see him 64. Plants. Oh, and that's Neil who had the carry, whose shoulder hit the left leg. And the big transfer, grad transfer from Floral Park, New York, who, by the way, was an all Sun Belt choice in South Alabama, will be helped here to the sideline. Don't forget the huddle is our signature football show on ACC Network, hosted by Jack Collinsworth with Coach Rick, EJ Manuel. And Eric McLean. They preview the weekend slate of games, keep you updated on all things ACC football. Fridays at 8, Saturday mornings at 11, and all throughout the day. In fact, you'll see the guys coming up here at the half. Patrick Davis has come into the ball game. Canadian from Quebec to play that right tackle spot. DeVito, quick shot, Hackett, the tight end. That'll be a first down play to the 17 and a half yard line. Boy, Aaron Hackett's come up big today. He has he scored a touchdown. They've started to go to the tight end a little bit. They say a tight end is a quarterback's best friend. Tommy DeVito has found Hackett a number of times today. And now Tranquil, I think, time out for an injury. shaking up on the play. There's Justin Tranquil, who's got an equipment issue with his hat. And. I don't know if the helmet got him or not, but Tranquil does a good job. Watch him having to avoid the pick by the umpire. Goes oh. down. And yeah, you saw when he hit the ground, Hackett lands kind of on top of him. So I'm check the, the trainer's checking out his neck a little bit. He'll have to come out for at least a snap. So Tranquil from Huttertown, Indiana, an academic all mid American player. But the note on Tranquil that is just shows you how much he enjoys the game. He has suffered three ACL tears in his college football career and continues to be one of the leaders for Tim Lester and defensive coordinator Lou Esposito. He's one of those guys that's going to move all over the place. He's going to cover tight ends, play down in the box, so play back deep. See how long he's out. Three and a half to go. DeVito takes a shot to the end zone. Harris tried to come back for it in a flag. Lupro there playing the corner on a ball for Taj Harris. Remember Lupro in the game because of the injury to Dwayne Eskridge. The all everything cornerback. Lupro getting tested. 
Seen him go that way. Seen Syracuse go that way a number of times. That's why you underthrow that ball so your receiver has a chance to come back. Defense, number four. The 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Sixth penalty of the day against the Broncos for 64 yards. This man-to-man -man coverage, a fade. Again, Tommy DeVito underthrows the ball. You see Taz Harris trying to come back in that grab around the waist. That's one that's going to get called by these referees every single time. And inside, not much there for Bo Neal. Zaire Barnes, Sam Backer. He's opting to slow down the pace here a little bit, get in the right play. Likely going to get man-to-man -man coverage across the board, but not expecting to run the ball. Play fake to Neal. DeVito throws it out of the back of the end zone. Hackett, the closest receiver. Ball ended up in the seats. Yeah, how about make a play? what you come to the game for and get those right uh, there get those good seats up there for you get an opportunity you got to make the play but on that one it looked like Braden Fisk was covering the tight end Fisk listed as a nose tackle but he was downfield he was the closest guy to Aaron Hackett who they were trying to find in the back of the end zone take the tight end out here bring an extra receiver in that's Riley in motion DeVito looks right to his left, flag is thrown, and Tommy DeVito will go out of bounds. This is going to be on Veterello, the tackle. There's two flags. There's one in the area of holding. There's one on the near side as well. Wow. You're going to get an illegal shift. There are two fouls on the play, both on the offense. Illegal shift, offense, holding. Offense, those penalties are declined. Fourth down. Okay. And so, Andre Schmidt will come on. Again, we talked about the stop earlier for this defense, forcing the punt and then leading to a Western Michigan score. This is just as big a stop here because yep. Western Michigan gets the ball back after halftime. Now your offense has an opportunity to go down. And Andre Schmidt's Mr. Automatic. So assuming that this is made to bring it to within one score with an opportunity to get the ball after halftime. 24-yard try for Schmidt. Tight left to right angle. And he squeezes it inside the left upright. 11-point lead for the Orange after the field goal by Schmidt. A year ago in Kalamazoo, Eric Dungy and the Orange ran off to a big advantage. But then the Broncos with Doreen Eskridge started mounting a comeback, Roddy. It was 34 to 7 at halftime, and Levante Bellamy had a great game. Dwayne Eskridge had a great game. Eric Dungy had 200 yards rushing. We saw Tommy DeVito today doing his best Eric Dungy impression with those runs, but a no lead is safe when these two teams meet. We expected a really good game. We have got us one here today. Yep. 11-point game, final two and a half of the opening half. Really big for the Broncos at this point of the game to settle down and eliminate the personal foul penalties. We talked about it before, 45 yards already in personal fouls, and it's only the first half. That is something that Tim Lester, I am sure, is on his guys on the sideline about. 70, Eric, on six total. For the Broncos. Hop Richter to kick it away to Mixon. And no return. So Western's seventh possession will start from its 25. Don't forget, ACCN grants you an all-access pass into Notre Dame women's basketball as the team prepares for the upcoming season. You'll get never-before-seen footage and sounds from head coach Buffett McGraw and our staff and players. One-hour show airs next Sunday night at 9 o'clock Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. And the all-access with Scott Satterfield at Louisville was phenomenal. And the one with Notre Dame women's basketball, I'm sure, 
will be just as outstanding too. Well, early returns on the all access as they are must see TV. Inside Bellamy to the 35 and knocked back by Cordy. Enough for the first down though. Boy, Levante Bellamy can be a problem. He can eat up yards in a hurry. This Western Michigan team picking up the pace just a little bit. Plenty of time left on the clock with just over two minutes. They've gotten Levante Bellamy involved in this game, and that's dangerous for the Syracuse defense. 86 yards on 10 carries, and he'll get another crack here into the secondary. Goes Bellamy to the 45-yard line. Tackle made by Foster, the safety. I'll tell you what, if he's not slowed up here at the line of scrimmage, he probably takes this once again to the house. Saw Lakeem Williams not able to bring him down, but the pursuit by Evan Foster was able to get him. And I, again, if he's not slowed up at the line of scrimmage, that's 4 2 speed up the sideline once again. Yep. Play fake. Here's Ricci. And Christopher Frederick holds on against Giovanni Ricci. Western Michigan's going to start to pick up the pace now with almost 120 left on the clock. Done a good job of managing the clock so far in this drive. Two timeouts left for both schools. Wasik with pressure. Back foot throw and it'll be out of bounds. Hall was the closest Bronco in the neighborhood. Frederick was covering. A lot of the secondary today for the Orange because of Malafani. And also uh, Andre Cisco being out. A lot of shuffling's going on today. For defensive coordinator Brian Ward and Kemp McLeod and Nick Monroe, who coach up that secondary in particular. Well, generally, they've played pretty well. Scoop Bradshaw's come in and filled in, as has Antoine Cordy. They've been good for the Syracuse secondary. Third down, seven to go. Pressure coming. Wasik bailing to his right. Throws it back toward Ricci, but a bounce pass incomplete. Fourth and six. This is not going to show up on the stat sheet, but Alden Robinson has set up camp in the Western <laughs> Michigan <laughs> backfield. He beats the left tackle, Spencer Cans. Excuse me, the right tackle, Spencer Cans, off the snap, basically. They're going to have to start charging him rent because he has set up an apartment, it seems like, back there. Yeah. By the way, I'm all about Alton Robinson's space pass, too. Oh, the old cage. Western Michigan's got the offense out here on the field. Sure. Right? You get the ball to start the second half. And now a flag is thrown. And I think Bustle might have started early. Deshaun Bustle, who had a big catch early. Offense, number 81. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. I think that's going to eliminate any thoughts of going for it on fourth down. You're just going to punt the ball away, which is a dangerous proposition. We've seen how fast this Syracuse offense can go, but at fourth and 11, fourth and 12, Tim Lester is going to have to punt it away. Tim Lester wants to know a little bit more about the movement. As Sean Riley stands at the eight, Nick Mahalik. Came in averaging a net of 37-2. Hangs this one up for Riley. And he's going to let it hit. And the Broncos will benefit from that. Downed at the four-yard line. And that was Jake Mortal who touched it up for Western Michigan. I know Syracuse can go fast, but in this situation, if I'm the Orange, I'm just running the clock out. Western Michigan has two timeouts. So if you come out and throw an incomplete pass on the first play, it can burn those two timeouts to get the ball back with enough time to be able to do so, at least get in field goal range for a potential long field goal. So we'll see what they take. They've got the big tight end, Chris yeah. Elmore, in the game, the guy they call Rhino, and that usually means, usually signals a run. But we'll see if Syracuse opts to go that way. So the ninth possession of this first half for the Orange. And here's DeVito, a quick throw to Taj Harris. He'll keep his feet. Oh, ruled out back near the eight. Harris trying to skip the line, going down in front of the orange bench. And it's a safe throw by Tommy DeVito, gets it out to Taj Harris. 
Almost got out of that. Steps on the line. Well, they saw Amari Rogers skip the light fantastic here last Saturday night on a throw like that. And Mo Neal will be brought down at the nine. Gain of a yard. And, and Tim Lester's going to call a timeout here, Wes, yeah. because you had Taj Harris going out of bounds on the first play. Now Tim Lester's in a situation where he can call a timeout with 46 seconds. And Syracuse has to choose. Do you try and go for the first down through the air? Or do you run the ball again and run the risk of getting stopped another timeout? Western Michigan would get the ball with just under 40 seconds-ish left. So, yep. well, er Eric spoke to Eric Dungy earlier in the half. You know about the relationship Tim Lester had with Dungy, the recruiting process from out in Oregon to bring him here to Central New York, and of course the the success Dungy had not only with Tim Lester and Scott Schaefer's administration, but then obviously with Dino Babers the last three years. The thing you respect about where Lester is. And Dungy spoke of this is the personal relationship Roddy that develops with coaches either through the recruiting process or if there is an administrative change as there was here the lasting impact of those relationships when you go through a relationship with a coach who recruited you who brought you to a place that means so much you're always going to have that relationship no matter what happens he's going to look for his defense to come up with a big stop straight ahead and Neil will pick up the first down to the 20. Now Dino Babers is going to bang timeouts. And this is the cat and mouse game that you play. Tim Lester took a gamble on his defense. Dino Babers making yep. the wise call, rushing the football. But they're able to gash Western Michigan up the middle. And now with the first down, again, we know how fast Syracuse can go. They can now set up and say, all right, guys, it's time for turbo speed. We're going to throw the ball, get out of bounds, and try and score. And the Orange will have a timeout to go here. And you see the San Diego native Dino Babers talking to his unit here. Guys, I've been impressed with Mo Neal today, both running and receiving. I think a guy who can really help you. Well, we knew that he was going to be a big part of the plan for Syracuse in this game He's their second leading receiver with 11 catches coming into this game leading rusher he's been fantastic and DeVito wants to throw and Neil caught it but fell down Davis the guard had pulled out into space and I'm not sure he and Neil did get kind of jammed up there on the screen yeah and that's going to end any hope of Syracuse deciding to go fast and try and score before the half it looks like Dino Babers is going to be content to take this into halftime with that 24 to 13 lead. Yeah, clock now to 10 and oh look here now with six five orange are going to squeeze off one more and it's Mo Neal. He will get to about the 23 Drake Spears to tackle and that takes us to halftime here at the Dome and Central maybe picked his spots a little more judiciously but still been very effective. Well and sack yardage was included in that. His overall yardage that he's gained is 99 yards but the sack yardage brings him down to 79. Mixon will field it in the end zone. Broncos will play from their 25 here. Yeah I talked to Tim Lester coming out of the half and for his second half adjustments he said we simply just need to be us. Cut out the turnovers, cut out the penalties, and they'll get right back in this game. Well, it's pretty easy because those two categories in particular, guys, have really troubled the Bronco head man. Well, you're talking about three fumbles lost, seven penalties for 75 yards. That is not a recipe for winning. Levante Bellamy already with his eighth career 100-yard game, and here's the youngster Moore on a five-yard catch. To start the second half. Sky Boy was all over the field six catches a week ago. That is his first one of the day. It's only his second time I can remember him being targeted today. So yeah. they're going to look to get the freshman going. He's got a little bit of that that wiggle, a little bit of shake, which you can't teach. Second and five. Wasik, Ricci, what a catch! First down across midfield. Giovanni Ricci against Mikel Jones, the linebacker. This is the, the matchup 
that Western Michigan was searching for, reaching against the linebacker. It's a really good throw by the quarterback, putting it up only where his big tight end can get it. Giovanni Ricci, we expected him to be a big part of this offense today, and he is not disappointed. That's his fourth catch of the day. Off the orange, 46 now, first and 10. Wasik on a little boot, shoots it back. That time the catch made, Tyron Arnett, who had four catches a year ago at a Pahokee High School. Third catch of the year in his first today. Interesting the way that this Western Michigan offense has come out. They struggled in the first half to block up front, particularly Alton Robinson, number 94, had a fantastic first half. So you go with something to get your quarterback on the run, try and slow down this pass rush. Play fake, Bellamy, and now they try to throw to Moore, and Frederick stuck a hand in. Christopher Frederick from Cedar Grove High School in the metro Atlanta area has had a nice day today. Certainly has. And just meant, mentioned Alton Robinson. And he basically had a free run to the quarterback, not intentionally, but just because he has been that good dominating these offensive tackles. Second in the full 10 for the Broncos. This is Bellamy's first carry and cannot break away from Robinson. Right on cue there, Roddy. Alton Robinson comes screaming down the line of scrimmage, not biting on the boot fake at all by Wasik, and that was an easy tackle for loss, padding his already impressive stats on the day. Roddy said in the first half, he would. Robinson's paying rent <laughs> behind the line. Yeah, he's been in the backfield the entire time. It'll be fun to watch him here on this third down as well when he knows that the Broncos have to throw the football. Western Michigan's hit four of eight on third down today. Orange brings four. Wasang offline for Ricci and took a shot from Kendall Coleman as he cut it loose. Well, Wes Ricci chipped at the line of scrimmage, chipped Kendall Coleman, who ended up eventually getting the pressure. But there was nobody covering him out in the flat. Had he been able to catch that ball, the only person that was close was Scoop Bradshaw, who was downfield guarding a, another Western Michigan receiver. Because of that missed opportunity, Western Michigan is forced to punt. Yep. And here is Mahalik. Sean Riley. Couple yards inside the 10 waits. Riley, by the way, had four returns for an average of 14 yards coming in, which first in the ACC and 14th nationally. This time he'll field it off a of bounce, and Riley does a nice job getting a little bit of. He's not a hard guy to fire up. No. And when his defense feeds off his energy, they're not hard to fire up. And for most of this game, they've been pretty good. Now, those other runs include sack yardage, but that's only 20 extra yards that you'd have. 41 yards gained in rushing on 20 plays, 119 on two Tommy DeVito runs and a Mo Neal run. Abdul Adams will get the carry on first down. Picks up about five, maybe six, before Claiborne got to it. Ryan Alexander, by the way, has come back at right tackle. That's Claiborne who's shaken up on the play. I mentioned Alexander, the right tackle for the Orange, is back in the lineup. We saw him leave late in the first half. And glad to see that it is not as serious as it potentially could have been, Roddy. They look like he had taken a shoulder from Neal on a run, just a little friendly fire to a knee. But Claiborne here. Looks like he might have gotten a stinger here. Yeah, he was flexing his hand a little bit. They're looking at that left arm. Gonna take a look at the tackle and Abdul Adams. It's a guy that's over 200 pounds that you're trying to tackle with a little bit of a head of steam. We'll see if Claiborne returns. Justin Tranquil, who we saw left leave the game early in the first or in the first half, excuse me, late in the first half, is back on the field. They've already lost Dwayne Eskridge for the game, so you don't want to get any thinner in that secondary. Yep. DeVito hands to Adams. Across the 35, first down for the Orange. A.J. Thomas the stop. It's quite a gear shift from Mo Neal to Abdul Adams now. Yeah, about the same height. Mo Neal listed at 195. Abdul Adams listed at about 205. 
Only 10 pounds difference, but a mentality difference as well. And almost picked. That was uh, lovely, the corner who came firing in. Broke up a ball intended for Riley. Just reads this from the very beginning. It's a pretty good break right there and almost picks it up. And Abdul Adams on second down gets it to third down. Third down here around midfield. We saw in the first half Syracuse have a lot of success with the screens and the draws on third down. Try and slow down this pressure. Western Michigan with a three down look. We'll see how many they decide to bring. DeVito up in the pocket. Going to cut it loose deep for Tristan Jackson. Caught it. Touchdown. Yesterday, we said, asked offensive coordinator Mike Lynch, what do you like most about Tommy DeVito? And the first thing he said physically was his deep ball. And there he climbs in the pocket, something that we had talked about him doing in this game. Throws a great pass down the field to Tristan Jackson for a big score on third down. Five plays, 83 yards in 76 seconds. Tommy DeVito, you see him moving up? Lays a great ball out there for Jackson, who makes a tough catch for the touchdown. 31-13, Cuse. That honors great teachers across the country. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard or search the hashtag Extra, Extra Yard Week. And Levante Bellamy had some thoughts on a very influential teacher in his academic career. So I feel like uh, Miss Huntington would just like sit me down, you know, uh, we'd talk about the game, uh, you know, it was just small stuff like that, uh, extra tutoring, you know, to just to make sure that I felt like I was another one of them. I didn't feel like an outcast, so I would like to thank her for that. Mixing on the return. Out to about the 31-yard line is where the Broncos will get started. 28-yard return by Keith Mixon, Jr. Now Levante Bellamy's already got his eighth career 100-yard game today. He had five 100-yard games a year ago. And Bellamy returns with the Broncos and John Wasik here on this drive now after the DeVito to Tristan Jackson, 59-yard strike. Yeah, you need a response here. Down 31-13. They've got Ricci and Sky Moore down at the bottom of the screen. If I'm John Lawson, that's where I'm going. Moore breaks free. Here's Wasik trying to get out of trouble and into the orange bench area after a gain of right at five to the 36. Curtis Harper shoved him out of bounds, but he had a bunch of friends with him. That was a little Houdini trick by John Wasik. He actually had Sky Moore flying up the field, and you saw Alton Robinson and Kingsley Jonathan meeting in the backfield. But Wasik steps up in the pocket, finds a little bit of room, is able to scramble. These offensive tackles are struggling in those one-on-one -on -one blocks. Yep. Bellamy juggled the handoff and now breaks free. Across midfield and a first down for Levante Bellamy with Frederick finally taking him down at the 46 of the orange. 18 yards and pretty impressive for Levante Bellamy. Well, it's a good block out there on the edge by the tight end, the offensive tackle, and Bellamy just needs a little bit of room. Syracuse lucky to get a hand on him and slow him down because once again, if you're not able to get that hand, grab the shoulder pad, slow him down. There's a seam there that Levante Bellamy can take advantage of. First and 10 now for the Broncos. And Bellamy just fights for a yard or two up the middle. Dino Babers told Jarrett, going to the locker room, we got to get number two on the ground. Absolutely. Every time he touches it, it can go to the house. He has incredible speed. 
And Dino Babers mentioned they have got to improve their tackling on him, but he's so low to the ground, he's so shifty, that's easier said than done. And Tim Lester and his group, Jake Moreland, his offensive coordinator, who was a teammate of Lester's in his days at Western Michigan as well, they talked about having really two different guys in both Bellamy and Sean Tyler, the freshman who had a big time run last week against Georgia State. And here is Bellamy on cue. And they won't catch it. Touchdown for Levante Bellamy. 43 yards. And just like that, the Broncos answer. Well, they put both of the tight ends to one side of the offensive line. You're going to see them both on the left side. Get a couple of nice blocks. Look like a zone play. Levante Bellamy just bounces it, breaks the tackle from Antoine Cordy, and then it's all speed. Gets a good block from Sky Moore down the field as well. Receiver helping out a little bit, and Western Michigan's going to leave the offense on the field. Remember, missed an extra point earlier, so going to go for two here, it looks like, after this touchdown. 15 carries, 165, and two scores for Levante Bellamy. Now, Tyler has come in to join Wasik in the backfield. Reaches the third man from the bottom in the slot. Wasik to his right. Pulls the trigger and threw it behind. Bustle, the intended receiver. Lakeem Williams, the linebacker, was pressuring Wasik, the quarterback. Syracuse may have gotten away with a little bit of a hold on the extra point, but this is what brought it closer to Levante Bellamy. Big touchdown run, Syracuse with the ball next. But 19. The Broncos fight back after the long TD from DeVito to Jackson. Then you get Levante Bellamy's second big touchdown run of the day. He's got 90 yards on two TD runs. The last one, 43, but still a 12-point advantage. And here's Nakeem Johnson now on the kick return. Short kick by Mahalik and. Orange are going to scrimmage from out at the 31-yard line. Don't forget, week four of ACC football continues next. Another Maxion battle in the ACC. Chippewas and Canes from the Hard Rock at 4 o'clock. Chris Cotter, Mark Hersley, Kelsey Riggs on site. And then at 7.30, the 49ers is Charlotte at top-ranked Clemson. Our ACC primetime football presented by GEICO tonight from Frank Howard Field at Memorial Stadium, Clemson, South Carolina. The way Dabo Sweeney was talking about the explosiveness of the Charlotte 49ers, you'd have thought they were the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> the old San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The Montana to Rice combo Niners. Here is Mo Neal, and he will pick up six on first down. Tackle made by Hayward. Yeah, if you, you listen to Dabo's press conference this week, you would have thought for sure it was Joe Montana and <laughs> our buddy Randy Cross in the offensive line. Exactly. Those 49ers. I will say Will Neely, though, in his opening year at Charlotte, did put 50 up on UMass last week, Roddy. There's going to be a lot of teams that put 50 up on UMass Whoa, this year, Wes. Okay, but, uh, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> the Syracuse offense has found something on that boundary side. Patrick Lupro, who's in for Dwayne Eskridge, I think they've been going at him a significant amount. Here's Neal. And the Orange are just driving it on the ground. What a collision with Spears there. Got something going with Mo Neal and Abdul Adams in the backfield. They're operating at a tempo that I think they like to operate at. A little bit faster than we saw last week, although some confusion. Got Hackett split out wide, the tight end. They're going to throw to Riley here in front of the bench. And that'll be enough, I believe, for the first down of the 46 of Western Michigan. Anton Curtis. Some jawing after the play against Riley. And very quickly, the line. Go the orange. Another quick throw. Jackson trying to catch it on the sweep and does. Tristan Jackson will score. 46 yards. And ran through the last would-be Bronco tackler, A.J. Thomas. 
The thing that Tristan Jackson does excellent on this play is attack the football, comes down the line, makes it really hard for Anton Curtis to make the tackle, breaks two tackles, see the stiff arm laid on A.J. Thomas, and then there's nobody left. How about the last two drives for this guy? The big touchdown catch, 59 yards on a jump ball, then Tommy DeVito just throws it down the line of scrimmage, and he does all the rest with his legs. Tristan Jackson is showing. We talked about it earlier. They needed somebody to step up. This is the guy. Yep. The lead is now 19. Tommy DeVito has thrown touchdown passes of 59 and 46 here in the second half against the Broncos. A second half, he and Tommy DeVito have had. DeVito now 230 yards on 21 of 27 and three touchdowns. And the Broncos will start from their 25. Jackson today, seven for 148 on nine targets, Roddy. Yeah. 59 plus 46, what's that? 105 yards on the last two drives? It's pretty good. Yeah. And those are just the scores. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They've been looking for a guy to step up and be the guy like they've had the past three seasons that Dino Babers has been there. And yep. this is a good way to make that claim. Devon Tucker has come in. And he'll get the carry on first down. The senior from Somerdale, New Jersey, who had 13 carries for 70 yards and a touchdown through the first three ball games for the Broncos, who lost Dwayne Eskridge today on their opening drive after a big time 43 yard catch. And Eskridge, by the way, a two way star for this Bronco team, starting at corner and at wide receiver. We were just told he was out for the year, but I was looking ahead here. They've got Central Michigan next Saturday at Waldo Stadium in Kalamazoo, which I know that's a rivalry to start with, but also a Mac game as Wassing tries to dial more in the middle of the field against Frederick. And now a flag will be thrown from 20 yards behind the play and pass interference against Christopher Frederick. So. Pass interference, defense, number three. The ball be placed at the flag spot of the on. Foul. It's an automatic first down. Frederick. It's ticketed here. There's a little bit of grabbing. See on the shoulder pad, trying to get him, and then collision. Anytime you knock the receiver off like that, you impede his ability to catch the football. It's going to be called. I like to call by the refs. Yep. So first and ten out of the forty. And Wasik to throw. Pocket collapsing, and he will collapse under the pressure of Lakeem Williams. Won't be a sack because John Wasik managed to back up into a yard on the play. There's actually a corner blitz coming from the bottom of the screen. Wasik sees it out of the corner of his eye and just steps up in the pocket, gets what he can. It's actually a pretty good outcome for Western Michigan considering you had a free rusher at the quarterback. It's a good job by the senior of feeling it, getting up there, and limiting the damage. take Hall and pull him back here to the near side with Ricci and Mixon the two fellows already to the wide side Wasik tees it up and it's caught Hall and Jalen Hall gonna break away from Frederick for the touchdown I thought it was a ball intended for Mixon I think Mixon did too I'm not sure that Jalen Hall didn't think that but when it goes by, he sees the overthrow. Johnny on the spot catches it. Syracuse defense is looking at like what's going on, and Western Michigan gets lucky on one. It's a 60-yard touchdown to Jalen Hall. It's his second scoring catch of the year. Well, look, they don't put intended receivers down <laughs> on the completion. It doesn't really matter who it was going to. Ultimately matters whose arm it ends up in as the kick is good. Watch this. Mixon's down here at the bottom. I think that's where John Wasik is going. But it's over his head and behind him, maybe, huh? Yeah, exactly. Over his head and behind him a little bit. Jalen Hall catches it. 
Uh, maybe he was going to Jalen Hall. I, I, I don't know, but with two receivers right there, it sure looked like Mixon was the intended target. It was on the money for Hall, though, so if I'm John Wasink, I'm not making any apologies for that one. I think Jalen Hall just let the cat out of the bag. I, he was pointing back towards somebody up the bench area, <laughs> and I think that everybody over there for the Broncos realizes Mixon might have been the intended target. Jalen Hall just had to be right spot, right time. That's one of those when you come over the sideline. Tim Lester asked John Wassing, who are you throwing that ball to? And you said, oh, Jalen Hall, 100%. You sell that if you're the quarterback. <laughs> Can you win that, though, Eric, going to film room? Can you win that one? <laughs> yeah, I, I think you uh, you just claim it if you're Wassing. And, guys, last year there was 42 points scored in this game in the third quarter alone, already 27 through 11 minutes of this, uh, or sorry, through nine minutes of this third quarter. Yeah. Here's the fielding kick by Nakeem Johnson, and whoa, McCree grabs him at the 18, and there'll be no more. Don't forget the huddle comes up on ACC Network. Get you ready for big football weekends with Jack Collinsworth, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and Mark Rick. They'll preview the weekend slate of games, keep you updated on all things ACC football Friday night today. Saturday mornings at 11, and E. Wood offered up a little, uh, little advice for McLean this morning. Huh? Yeah, you, you don't really mess with you don't mess with the uh, the first rounders with the uh, with the threads. But did you see Coach Rick's 10 bite sandwich? He broke down how to eat a sandwich. Oh no, we did that today. Oh yeah, uh, that may have been last night that, they, that those old, guys got together. That's an old favorite oh, from yeah. back when he was in Miami. The old 10 bite sandwich. You go you go triangles, you go corners first, then to the middle. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty pretty legit. Rick's offered you a lot. Delay a game, by the way, Rick's on the snap. orange here. Delay a game. Offense, number 13. Five-yard penalty, first down. You know what I thought of earlier today, and every time I see a ball rolling around on the ground now, I think of the Coach Rick Spork. Got to go with the Spork. He went boys. week one and tell us about the Spork. Uh, I've learned more on the culinary side of things from Coach Rick than I ever imagined. Yeah, yeah. You go Spork when you're recovering the football, 10-bite sandwich. Man, Coach Rick, just a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. Here's DeVito after the penalty for the delay, flips it out, and this is Adams on the screen, and whoa, good pursuit, including Justin Tranquil, who has made a lot of plays today at the back end for Western Michigan. He's been all over the place for this Western Michigan defense. Got a little banged up in the first half, but back on the field, and he's a guy that they just allow to fly around the field to make plays. Under five and a half to go. Quick throw, and at the near side, Cameron Short. Sophomore from here in New York State. Doesn't get a lot there. It might award him the 20-yard line, which would be about a yard. Well, Western Michigan put Treshawn Howard out there and made a great play there, shucking the block. Now Syracuse with a third and long. DeVito. Steps up, and Tommy DeVito fumbled the ball as he hit the ground, and it's scooped up by Stephon Claiborne. And it is a turnover for the Orange. It would be their second if it stands. Rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by Western Michigan for first down. He's down. Western Looks like that knee is down, yep. The previous play is under further review. They review all of these. You see the knee down right there. Clearly, ball still in his hand. So this is going to be overturned in terms of the fumble. DeVito was quick to plead his case right after the uh, turnover. It'll be short of the first down. He's at the 25 when the knee hits. Yeah, you see it there. Knees down, ball in his arm. That's going to be overturned for sure. And look, for these quarterbacks, when you dive like Tommy DeVito does here, you don't get the same protection that you do when you slide. Right. So obviously, when you slide, wherever you start the slide is where the quarterback is considered down. That's where the ball goes. But when you dive like that, if it's a bang-bang play on the ground and you're not quite sure if the quarterback is down, you're not going to get that protection. Tommy DeVito pled his case about that and also may have been saying, hey, that was a little bit of a late hit. I was already on the ground. But bang-bang play, you don't get that protection when you go head first. Yep. 
the guy in pursuit on that play was Ali Fayed and we haven't said his name a whole lot today and you got to give the offensive line for Syracuse credit they have been much maligned through three games this season and rightfully so at times but not all the issues have been on them and I got to give a compliment to Ryan Alexander who's battling through after getting banged up in the first half he's been doing a great job on number one for Western Michigan because that guy has been a problem this season for other teams a sack three tackles for loss two quarterback hits and a forced fumble coming into this game and we have not called his name at all today Eric to your point. And quite frankly, we thought he might be a guy who could disrupt a little bit of what Syracuse was trying to do from a tempo perspective. We did, and the Western Michigan coaches are extremely high on him. I talked to Jason Babin, who was a teammate of Lester's at Western Michigan. When Lester was the quarterback, Jason Babin was a freshman scout team defensive end. He said he was a nightmare for him, and you can't even hit the quarterback in practice. But Babin worked with Fayed over the offseason this summer and spent some time with him and got him to completely change his mindset, his approach to the game, how he approaches his body, and really took him to the next level. So all those things considered, you have got to give Syracuse offensive line some credit. And, and they haven't got a whole lot of credit this season, but I'm giving it to them right now. They have done a great job in containing number one. Fayed, by the way, had 34 tackles. 12 of them for loss a season ago but after going through a little film study with Babin who's obviously away from football and now in the construction business Roddy throughout the state of Michigan and also in Florida a little influence like that can do a lot the was down at the 25 yard line It'll be fourth and the fumble here four. overturned the clock is good it will start on the snap fourth down so 450 to go and there will be a punt coming up for Hofrichter but if you're Tim Lester and Lou Esposito, Ali Fayed might have gotten a film session with Jason Babin that has changed the course of his the career, Roddy. And it happens now. I mean, you guys both, I'm sure, hung around some guy that came back to either Georgia Tech or Louisville during your careers who had an impact on what the rest of your college and potential next level were going to be. Absolutely, was. Those guys that come back stay around the program, that's why you want them around. Hoffrichter gets it away. Crowd wanted a roughing penalty, won't get it. Well, now there is a flag. And let's see what we have here. Running into the kicker, receiving team, the five yard penalty. That penalty results in a first down. There you go, that's all he needed. Hop Richter, by the way, is quite a weapon. Certainly is. You're down 10. Trying to make a play, about to get the ball back, make it a one-score game. And it's not egregious, but it's just enough. Stephon Claiborne going in front of the punter. That's an unforced error, though. It looked like Stephon Claiborne could have rerouted. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those where he doesn't try to get out of the way for yeah. certain. He's not certain. He's not trying to to hit Sterling Hoffrichter. But Hoffrichter, that's a better move, though, by a punter. Leaving your leg out there on the follow-through. Yep. Get clipped, go down, put the pressure on the ref to make the play, or make the call. He gets it. Abdul Adams with DeVito. Penalty extends the drive. Quick throw, and this is Hackett, who's had a very productive day from the tight end spot. The junior from Venice, Florida. Spears the stop for the Broncos. And an early move there on Veterello. That'll cost the Orange five. Legal snap. Offense. Number 68. Five yard penalty. Second down. It's your guy, Aaron Service, the center who's slid over from left tackle with the injury to Sam Heckle. Did a pretty nice job today, other than a couple of holding penalties early in this game. That's a major flow, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, great. Straight ahead, ball fumbled and recovered, I believe, by the Broncos at the 35. Looked like Lupro had a crack at it after Neal coughed it up. 
Lou Esposito is fired up after this Western Michigan special teams. Makes a mistake running Field into the, the kicker, fumble. extends the, the drive. Western Michigan, first down, Western Michigan. The turnover championship belt comes out. Yeah. To the handoff to Abdul Adams. Looks like a head, an, an arm just pokes that ball out. It may have been Ali Fayed, and Esposito is fired up. <laughs> Better watch out for those flailing arms, man. I was scared last night in our meetings that Eric Wood was going to have to line up against Lou Esposito for like a thud drill. <laughs> I really was. You don't have to worry about that. There was no chance of that. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't been that long, big fella. Wasik under duress. And he will be sacked. Alton Robinson is having a day for the Orange. Well, when you got a great pass rusher, it's like a great hitter, Wes. When those guys are going well, they are almost unstoppable. Robinson gets the initial pressure, gets pushed up the field by Jordan Asbury, and then just recovers, retraces his steps, gets back to the quarterback, and have a day, Alton Robinson. We mentioned it in the open. Teams have not done traditional dropbacks against Syracuse much this year because of their two defensive ends, and especially Robinson. Western Michigan is going to have to get to either shorter passes or get back to running the football. Wasik. Gonna flip one down the field. Bellamy can't come up with it on a diving try. Antoine Cordy was there, as was Eric Coley, and I think Levante Bellamy shaking up on the play. This was timeout for an injury. And so is Cordy, by the way, for the Orange. Just a little collision by these two guys. See Cordy coming across. Bellamy just out of the reach. Wow. Bellamy hits the ground pretty hard. Looked like Cordy may have hit Bellamy kind of awkwardly. And mm -hmm. both of those guys being tended to. Yep. A lot of speed and power back and forth in the open field there, Roddy. Yep. And coming from two different directions. See Dino Babers making his way over to the opposite side of the field to go see about his defensive back. Tim Lester likewise on a knee there with Bellamy. So yeah. both these coaches know. Those are the scary ones in this game where you have two guys running full speed and it doesn't need to be a head on collision. It could just be a glancing blow, but you said it because of the velocity that those two guys are moving at. It can, uh, can lead to some gnarly collisions as you see Cordy's up, still tending to Bellamy on the ground. And as Bellamy was streaking down the field, I believe Cordy was going for a mid body shot on Bellamy, but as he dove, his target area got lower, and it's not a targeting, yeah. but that's what caused that enormous collision, the slight overthrow, which caused the dive. So Levante Bellamy will come off the field. He's got a lot of talent. Bellamy's tough cat, too, now. He certainly is. And yeah. when you talk about his prospects at the next level, he's got something that you can't teach. Speed. Yeah. Can't teach that, can't grow it. Some guys have it, some guys don't. Levante Bellamy certainly does, and we're going to get him checked out. We'll see when and if either one of those two guys return to the game. So now Tucker will come in the ball game to spell Bellamy. And third and... 14 is the setup for Western Michigan. And yeah, they go with Davon Tucker in the backfield, the senior, instead of Sean Tyler, the freshman, largely to help with his pass protection. Wasik, middle of the field, Ricci first down. Giovanni Ricci, the big tight end, crashes inside the 20. Well, I've got to give a shout out to the right tackle Spencer Cans for just running Alton Robinson past the quarterback John Wasik delivers the ball down the middle of the field and in the times that we have seen Syracuse go zone when they haven't been able to get pressure on the quarterback it's largely been reaching good job by Cans that time against Robinson first and 10 at the 19 Tucker tries the left side and took a big hit and that was Evan Foster 
senior from Michigan by the way and Levante Bellamy is headed to the locker room Wasik by the way over 300 yards now on 18 of 31 with two scores Tucker again toward the first down had to get to the nine I think he's a step shy as we go inside of two minutes here in the third Kingsley Jonathan the Nigerian born defensive end makes the play for the orange and you're, you're down by 12 here this is a game where you're gonna have to score touchdowns to win it I think this is four down territory but not be surprised to see a little zone read action run the football here Tucker has it First and goal for the Broncos coming up. They are trying, Roddy, it looks like A or B gap plays. They are trying to get to him quick before Robinson and or Coleman can disrupt the plays. Well, that's because what, they know Robinson particularly has been very strong. And, and, and that's what you have to do on that play. They run a little zone read action, so someone has to account for the quarterback. You're able to slip inside for the run and now Sean Tyler's in the backfield the explosive freshman first and goal Wasik in trouble Robinson missed him here's Wasik throwing to the end zone trying to get it to Hall who was out of bounds it was incomplete with Scoot Bradshaw defending the official had thrown his hat along the back line which Indicated that Jalen Hall, the intended receiver, gone out of bounds. Well, Wes, the pressure gets to him, but watch Ricci right here. Goes straight to the back of the end zone, and he's wide open in the back of the end zone. But because of the pressure, Wasik isn't able to get to him. Has to roll out to his right. Ricci's going to go back and say, hey, man, what happened? I was standing there scot-free in the middle of the end zone. But the pressure there by Syracuse disrupts it. Eight play of the drive. The give is to Tyler around the edge, and he'll score for Western Michigan. Third rushing score of the year for freshman Sean Tyler. Well, they run it to the perimeter here. He gets a couple of pullers out front, outruns number nine, Evan Foster, and then it's a race to the pylon with Lakeem Williams, gets a foot in the end zone, clear touchdown. And Western Michigan has an opportunity here to bring it within five. Caps point after is good. 49 seconds to go in the third. And it's a 38-33 ball game. Western Michigan has scored touchdowns in each of their last three possessions. Bellamy and Tyler a run and sandwich that around a Wasik to Jalen Hall 60 yard touchdown pass. And Western has 14 points off Syracuse turnovers today. <laughs> it's kind of been the story of it hasn't it I mean in the first half it was the Western Michigan turnovers in the yep. second half it's the Syracuse turnovers and this Western Michigan team was once upon a time down 21 to nothing has now climbed to within five. And it's a five point margin Roddy but Missed two point try, missed PAT, three turnovers, and my goodness, a bunch of penalties, especially in the first half for Tim Lester's team. They had seven for 75. You see, they only have one second half penalty for five yards here in half two. It's part of the reason they've been able to climb back in that game, in this game, making Syracuse earn it, and also getting being the beneficiary of a couple turnovers rather than giving away first downs like they did in the first half. Mahalik's kick and Nikeem Johnson from the five. Johnson looking for a slot and a flag is thrown as he's dropped at the 26. Now two flags thrown. Before the Orange take over. Return holding receiving team number 81. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Syracuse. Cameron Jordan, the wide receiver. Well, it's a five-point game with 44 seconds to go in the third. The Orange will be backed up on this, their fourth possession of the second half. But you go to the FPI that ESPN uses, this was going to be close. 
Actually, Western Michigan in the matchup predictor was favored by about 12%. Well, the, the wise people in Vegas had Syracuse as a slight favorite. FBI has Western Michigan as a slight favorite. So coming in, we knew this one was going to be exciting, especially with how it was last year. Yep. Syracuse had the big lead at halftime. Western Michigan became storming back, and then the Orange ended up getting the victory. Eight penalties now for the Orange, and here is Bo Neal. And he'll pick up a couple on first down. 35 seconds to go and counting here in quarter three. We have an interesting fourth quarter coming up for Tim Lester and his team. They are going to into the fourth quarter with 360 yards of offense from last year injured and in the locker room in Eskridge and Bellamy. It'll be interesting to see who steps up and makes the plays for them. Taj Harris makes one for the orange on what is likely the final play of the third. A big turn and burn for Harris out to the 35. On a 13-yard throw. And that will be the final play of the third. Because the Orange won't be able to get it snapped. As the quarter is in the books. We go to the final 15 at the Dome. Syracuse has lost two straight. Trying to pick up win number two on the year. Against a pesky group of Broncos from the Mid-American Conference. Fourth quarter next. Well, football school had a big plays, big days motto. <laughs> We're going to big plays on a Saturday. Well, then they're split evenly. Three for Syracuse, three for Western Michigan. West through three quarters, 946 yards of total offense between these two teams. Get ready, 15 more to go, and there is Neal banging away on first down. Every once in a while, Roddy and Eric, you think they're slowing down. Both schools, for that matter. And then all of a sudden, explosion plays. They have been able to crank it up, both of these teams. Check out this. You've got Chris Elmore, the Rhino, right here down to the bottom of your screen. would be a great lead blocker for a quick toss. Look at the Rhino. Here is Neal, and he'll get a yard, maybe, maybe not. Chris Elmore, by the way, Eric, is my new favorite player in the ACC. Number five. Look at him. Here he comes jogging off in front of the bench area. Hey, and with all coaches we've talked to through this season, you have to earn the single-digit numbers. Yeah. You're talking about a 300-pound tight end that earned that number five, yeah. Wes. I don't love it. Guy does a lot look of the dirty the, work. Look at the face mask, the oh, sweatpants, the whole deal. DeVito shoots one. Oh! Almost picked Curtis trying to fit it to Riley I believe Wes I didn't play defensive back in college but I played it a little bit in high school and when you have a great break on the ball you're almost like please throw it please throw it please throw it watch him at the bottom of the screen he has a great break on this reads it all the way when he throws it it hits him in the wrong place, and that's right in that three in the middle of his chest. You're expecting a ball that's maybe off a little bit, having to make an adjustment. And when it's that easy sometimes, those are the hardest ones to concentrate and make the play on because he saw the green grass in front. That is the first almost miss of the day for DeVito, by the way. And mixing the fair catch, he's going to let it hit, and it will be touched up inside the 10. And when I say miss, I'm talking about some of the stuff we talked about at the top that had plagued him maybe through the last couple of weeks. Don't forget, coming up next game, two of our triple header. Off will send you to Miami Gardens, Florida. Central Michigan meets Miami at the Hard Rock. And then tonight, ACC in primetime football presented by Geico. The 49ers of Charlotte visit the top-ranked Clemson Tigers. Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck, Katie George will join you from Frank Howard Field. At Memorial Stadium. 55 yard punt. John Wasick and the Broncos off their own nine. Quick throw, and this is Moore. And he'll have the first down to the 20 against Eric Coleman. Syracuse decides to play off on either the slot or the outside receiver. Western Michigan's going to be more than happy to take those easy throws. Give John Wasick some. Easy completions, get the ball down the field, and don't give those defensive linemen time to rush the passer. Remember, we saw Levante Bellamy go to the locker room after he was shaken up. Devon Tucker there in the backfield. 
and he'll get the carry on first down. Maybe two to the 22. Hey, Eric and Ronnie, we talked about Western Michigan might want to gear down a little bit in the ball game today. Are we watching Tim Lester's team down five gear down in terms of their approach offensively, almost slowing things down? I think that's smart, especially with the injuries that they've had and they lose Eskridge for the game on defense. With the pace of Syracuse, they have to protect the stamina of their guys on defense. One of their weaknesses this season is their depth. And here is Ricci fighting for the first down after he caught it and then was able to battle through the tackle of Eric Kohler. We have seen exactly why their NFL scouts really excited about him. Just a little delayed release up the field. Gives his quarterback a nice big target. Able to get the first down for Western Michigan. Here's the freshman Tyler now. Ricci, by the way, 83 yards on seven catches. Now Tyler to work with Wasik on first and ten. And Sean Tyler picks up about four, maybe five. A lot of zone read used by the Broncos in the second half, and Wasik has handed off each one. There is there's been a couple times where it appears like he could have taken it himself for a big game. Don't be surprised if when they get back to the sideline, they don't coach him up on that, and he breaks one here in this uh, in this fourth quarter. Too tight look again. Tyler, boy, almost slipped through there. It was a shoot top tackle by Mikel Jones. And then gone to this inside zone play that we've seen the last couple of plays. And had some success running the football, setting up a third and short. Well, now they have the option to go with that again, that zone read that Eric was talking about potentially. Or looks like they're playing off. They've been in that 12 personnel with those two tight ends, both of them lined up to the bottom of the screen. And here is Wasik on the carry that Eric spoke of a moment ago, and on third and short. We'll see how they spot this if he gets to the 42. Kendall Coleman knocked him back. And they're calling it a first down. It was, looked like it was close. Dino Babers hasn't protested all that much. But no measurement, just a declared first down. Easy to play quarterback for my position here over on the sideline. But on that play, it looked like Tyler had a crease. He kept it, but a great job of straining for the first down. That's a huge first down for the Broncos. Hey, now, man. Western Michigan. Previous play is under further review. And this one looked like it was called from upstairs. You know, Babers looked like he was lobbying for it a little bit. And line to gain is something that they can review. He's got to get 42. right at the 42. Oh, man. It, so, this is one of those that you, you have to have a shot that shows it. You have to have one down the line showing that he did not get it. And on this play, I, I just don't think there's the shot right down the line there to show exactly Wasink not crossing the 42. All of these are at an angle. I'm not sure from the ones that we've seen, this may be the best one that we get. The ones that we've seen, there's not enough to overturn it Boy, yet. Kendall Coleman does not even buy Sean Tyler on the handoff. And what a great play by Kendall Coleman. Yeah, absolutely. He crashes. I, I misspoke. It looked like uh, when Kendall Coleman made the play on the quarterback, I assumed there there had to have been a crease for the running back. He took away the running back, then took away the quarterback. That was an incredible play by the senior defensive end from Indianapolis Cathedral, a great high school in Indianapolis. By the way, Roddy, it takes us back to a topic where, look, the Syracuse defensive coaches, I mean, Brian Ward pretty candid, hey, look, Teams are getting the ball out, Maryland in particular. For further Get review, the runner was short of the line of the game. He got to the 41 and a half yard line. It will be fourth down from there. And, and here's the deal. Brian Ward knew that teams were getting the ball out quick to try and keep Coleman and Robinson at bay. Western Michigan knew it. Jake Moreland talked about it. Tim Lester talked about it last night. But Coleman and Robinson had dictated this game today from the defensive end spots. And it, it doesn't matter whether it's pass game or run game. These guys have been a part of it, but a big fourth down here. Western Michigan with two tight ends still on the field. 
Ricci's right here on the line of scrimmage. If they go to the air, you got to like the matchup. He's likely going to be on the corner where the linebacker is lined up over. Broncos are one for two today. They hand it to Tyler, and I don't think he got it. He had to get to the 42 and didn't make it. Kenneth Ruff, the senior from Dillard High School down near Fort Lauderdale, Florida, was the first orange jersey there. Looks like the same play that they've gone to a number of times. For a measurement. Measurement. See the defensive end knifing in. Ruff, the first guy. Evan Foster looked like the second guy. They're going to bring the chains from across the way here, but he didn't hit the 42. No, and that the first down marker is right on that 42 yard line. Yeah, He's a full half yard short. And you got to do this just to make sure you hit the checklist in the manual. <laughs> I just, I never thought Tyler had enough momentum going forward here. Yeah. And he didn't get it by that much half foot and we're gonna break five point lead Lester's Broncos stopped on third and short and fourth and short by the orange back to the dome in a moment on third and fourth and short. Syracuse takes over Plusfield territory just outside the 41 of Western Michigan with Roddy Jones, Eric Wood, West Durham at the Dome. And DeVito to work and Bo Neal on first down behind the blocking of Big Elmore. And Balabani to stop after a gain of about two and a half. There's Antonio Balabani, born in Kosovo, who turns 23 in October. Syracuse has slowed down this tempo a little bit. They're still going to operate faster than most teams, but. There's a quick throw to Riley. Textbook RPO stuff right there, Ronnie. 100%. You throw out the fake at the linebackers to bite. You throw the slant to the slot receiver, Sean Riley. Makes a good catch and first down for the Orange. 11 yard throw. Neal has to dodge a couple. Stops, starts again, cuts back. Mo Neal at the 10, first and goal. What a big time run here by Neal. Well, this is a better run than even the yardage. There's two guys that are able to penetrate. He's able to maneuver against those two, makes another three miss. Coming back, breaking a tackle. I'm gonna pick up a first down for Syracuse. Tershawn Hayward shaking up on the play for the Broncos. And they're out to 10 to him. By the way, Levante Bellamy has now been ruled out for the remainder of the day for Tim Lester's offense. So he joins Eskridge, who was lost on the opening possession today. It's a tough day at the tough day on the injury list for the Broncos. You mentioned the fact that they open up Mac play with Central Michigan yep. next week. Hopefully they'll have both of those guys back. But while they look at the injured Western Michigan player, we'll go to break. In the Lone Star State, Treshawn Hayward to the uh, bench area. No official word there yet on Hayward. But it is warm in this building, and Syracuse has run 68 plays with nine minutes to go. 82 degrees here in the uh, Syracuse area. There's Mo Neal on first and goal. Tim Lester talked about it this week. The need for his team to, to hydrate. Even though you're in a dome, this is a dome that is not currently air conditioned. Something that they're going to do for next season, but it's 82 outside. With all the people, there's nowhere for the air to go. Yep. And he gets trapped in here. DeVito, little play fake. End zone, hack it. Did he hang on? He did. Touchdown, Syracuse. Who's having a day? Second touchdown catch of the day for the tight end, and it's just a fake, a rollout. 
get Hackett going to the corner flag and catch the ball, hold on to it, show the referee, and that one's going to count. So after they got the stop on downs, 93 seconds later, DeVito throws his fourth touchdown pass of the day. And it's a career high for Tommy DeVito. The point by Schmidt, good. The lead is 12, under nine to go at the dome. Orange trying to go to two, and Tommy DeVito have had moments today. Well, John Wasink, we've seen it this season from him. We hadn't seen this type of performance from Tommy DeVito. He's been incredible after having an interception in every single game this season, has not thrown one yet today. He has not blinked. I mean, 27 of 34, coming back against a crowd that's been getting after him a little bit at times has been really good for the Syracuse team, and that doesn't even include what he's done on the ground, which early in the game really got this offense going. Now DeVito, by the way, 84 yards on eight carries and a score. And there'll be no return for Mixon. Well, we told you about Coach Rick and his spork. That comes up on all ACC late tonight following Clemson in Charlotte. Scores, highlights, breakdowns, post-game interviews from the day and night on the gridiron. Nobody covers the ACC like we do. 10.30 Eastern following Clemson in Charlotte right here on ACC Network and, of course, the ESPN app. Always got to catch the late night edition of all ACC. You never know what you're going to get, honestly. The Broncos from their 25. And Tucker now without Bellamy in the ball game, alternating at the running back spot with Sean Tyler. Looked like the Broncos might have moved early. Here's a throw for Bustle. And a flag is going to be thrown against Scoop Bradshaw. Against the six foot two redshirt freshman from Knoxville, Deshaun Bustle. Pass the defense. Defense. Number 18. A 15 yard penalty. An automatic first down. All right, boys, take me through this one. Well, this ends up being a good play, but watch Sky Moore here to the bottom of your screen. He's going to make a move, a little natural pick. He is wide open down the middle of the field. If John Wasink sees that with no safety in the middle of the field, that is a touchdown. But here's the pass interference. You see the grab there by Scoop Bradshaw. Gets there a little early. Definite pass interference. Wasson going to cut another one loose, and there'll be another flag thrown here, this one on Trill Williams against Keith Mixon, Jr. And Dino Babers not particularly enamored with the pass interference. Defense. flags Number caused six. by the pass interference. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Look kind of like the same thing to be honest with you is a little bit of grabbing early Did mixing gear down here a little bit maybe but if he did that's a heady play by the receiver I mean you, that's what you want to do you want to have that guy run up your back So if you're not able to get to the ball, yeah, you get the call Plus territory now and here comes the blitz Wasik in trouble in sight Lakeem Williams Leads the orange in tackles. And the third sack of Wasik. It's up the middle. Lakeem Williams forces him to come up, and then he's cleaned up by a number of his teammates. See Josh Black in there as well. Syracuse team has gotten pressure on John Wasik all day, and that time it wasn't just the defensive ends. It was Lakeem Williams up the middle as well. Wasik, Ricci, the tight end, inside the 40 to the 38. It'll be third down after Coley's stop. They've done a really nice job of finding matchups for Ricci to be successful. Syracuse has shown a lot of different looks in this situation. The one constant has been pressure. So the question is, what do you do with Alton Robinson, who's going to be to the field? The running backs lined up to the other side. There's Robinson. What do they do to deal with him? He's been in the backfield constantly. Robinson got there on the back end. Giovanni Ricci first down to the 28-yard line. 
It's almost like Wasik and Ricci knew exactly what you were talking about. Well, you have to get the ball out quick if you're not going to give those offensive linemen any help. Syracuse goes zone. Ricci just throws, runs a little out. John Wasink, the senior, knows where to go with the football, and they're able to move the chains. Check out the numbers on Ricci today. Eight receptions, 105 yards. It has been fantastic. First 100-yard day for Giovanni Ricci. And incomplete. Ball intended for Arnett. And it looked like he and Trill Williams got tangled up. That happened right in front of me. And there was a ton of contact at the end of that play. But I think the referees are determining that that ball was uncatchable. By the way, the hype on Giovanni Ricci is real. Oh, yeah. There's a couple of guys where the hype is real. The hype on Alton Robinson is real. Well, we knew that guy was good coming in here. Mel Kuyper's got him rated as his number four overall senior defensive end. Oh, it's real. Yep. Wasson tried to fire one into Mixon and complete, and all of a sudden, third and a full ten. Eric, you hit it, though. Ricci's value is the fact that he plays, he's willing to play special teams, too. He's willing to play special teams. They described him as a willing blocker. So not a dominant blocker, but he's only just converted to tight end. So he'll get better and better at blocking. And here you see him lined up again in the slot and look for Wassing to go to him. Six of 13 on third down to the Broncos. Orange bring the house. Tried to go to Mixon, threw it behind him. Now fourth and 10. And Tim Lester's got to go for this, doesn't he? Yeah, down. He, he absolutely what? has to, and they tried to set up the screen there because those fire breathers off the edge were coming. You got man-to-man. -man. Wassing just not able to deliver a good ball. Ricci had the block downfield, but because that pressure got there so fast, Wassing had to get the ball out. Ricci and Moore will be to the right. Hall and Arnett here to the near side. Broncos have hit one of four on fourth down. Looks like they're going to play man to man again. Wasson hit by Robinson, overthrows Ricci. Alton Robinson got there again. And the Broncos give it away on downs. Alton Robinson has been a one man game wrecker for this Syracuse team. See him coming off the edge. He couldn't even pull his flag. John Wasson has no time. Syracuse gets the ball back. Defensive end number 94, Alton Robinson, had 10 sacks a year ago, and we have seen exactly why here today. You see him with the strip sack there, causing a turnover. He has been an absolute game wrecker. John Wasson has been under constant arrest because of him. He's been great in the run game, too, being able to penetrate, get up the field. And this is the last play on that fourth down. The pressure on Wasson forces an errant throw. Alton Robinson has been as advertised in this game. The coach has told us it's only a matter of time before he gets going. Orange start from their 28, and Mo Neal lowers the shoulder and drives Drake Spears for a yard. With six minutes to go, it'll be interesting to see if Dino Babers keeps his foot on the pedal and they keep the no huddle going with the fast pace. It seems like here they're going to slow it down a touch. Well, he's got big Chris Elmore in there. And I like Chris, but he doesn't want to make me buy speed in terms of what the uh, the tempo will be, right? My big fellow with the single-digit number. That's his favorite thing in college football. Wes, I talk about it every week. Eric Wood, you guys are in on single digits on the big Absolutely. fellas. They wind this clock all the way down, and here's Neal again. And Mo Neal will be just shy of the first down, I believe. And that might work to Syracuse's advantage on clock. Yeah, this is the epitome of a four-minute offense. You've seen how explosive Western Michigan can be. And, and honestly, if I'm Dino Babers, I'm thinking back to that play that we showed on the pass interference with Sky Moore running right down the seam yeah. and thinking, hey, this game is one of those passes completed away from being a real football game. They had the clock inside of 10 seconds, the play clock inside of 10 seconds when they snapped it the last time. They're not even up to the line of scrimmage, and we're already at 10 seconds. So they have gone into clock drain mode, four-minute offense. Yep. With about six minutes to go. <laughs> and Neal will not get the first down. Tell you what, that's well done. 
Part of that is uh, Timothy Collins, who was spotlighted earlier, who got around the legs of DeVito. And that time he had some help from Najee Clayton, who's a Rutgers transfer. Syracuse has the offense still on the field. And it's fourth and a step here. Right? Uh, I mean, you, get, you can't get a step at this point in the game, Roddy? I don't know, Wes. I, I'm willing to punt the ball away, let my defense play. Up to a couple of scores. Dino Babers is going to be aggressive. Yep. So we'll see. See if they're able to get it. Play clock at one. And they don't get it snapped. A flag call for delay a game. Number 13, five yard penalty. Now, do you think there was some gamesmanship from the head coach of the Orange there? Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Get them on the field. Give give the solid clap. Start See if they snap. jump a little bit. Especially when you got a weapon like Hoffrichter. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, and hit a boomer. This is one of those where you tell your punter, "Hey, unleash it right now." Uh, so, by the way, Sterling matched his career high last week of 65. He had it against NC State in 2018 and last week against Clemson. If he knocks this one through, it'll be a career high for him. He hangs it high for Mixon inside the numbers at the 19. Well, Dino Babers was fairly candid with us earlier in our meeting yesterday talking about the frustration of the last two weeks. Everybody can see. 104 to 26. But Roddy, today is going to help. We'll be here next Saturday at noon for Holy Cross. The Crusaders visit the Dome. And then, as you said at the top, there's really only one game difference from what you anticipated in the first three for the Orange. And, and zero games difference in the ACC standings. You only played one ACC game against Clemson. That one was going to be tough. When you get into that ACC stretch, that's when the rubber meets the road. Ball at the 20 yard line. For the Broncos and Wasink on the inside route to Tyron Arnett. And inside of four minutes, we go at the Carrier Dome. Now we're going to see the Western Michigan crank up the pace here. They've got to really go. They're going to get back into it. Wasink going to take the shot. Arnett again, the intended receiver, and incomplete. Trill Williams defending. The Orange are playing today without Andre Sisco. And Ifatu Belafonwu in their secondary. The Cisco injury, or absence, if you will, is one that is paused for concern. Belafonwu is certainly off to a good start, had nine tackles and an interception in their first three games. But it's forced Frederick, Bradshaw, Cordy, and Coley, by the way, to play bigger roles for the Orange. And that's off the hands of Mixon incomplete. Holy there defending for the orange. Well, if I'm Syracuse, I'm continuing to go to that man to man coverage. As you see, Andre Cisco, guy who had seven interceptions a year ago, freshman All American. They love, they'd love to have him on there, but the important thing is getting him healthy for ACC plays. Western Michigan keeps the offense on the field. Have to in this situation. We've seen a lot of man to man coverage from Syracuse on these third and fourth downs, a lot of press. We've got Ricci in the slot right here. Looks like he's going to be matched up against the safety core Coley. See if they go to him. The throw for Ricci couldn't hang on. And again, for the third straight possession, the Broncos give it away on downs. It's just a mental lapse by your big tight end. Wasink has a mental clock that's a little bit sped up because of Robinson, because of Coleman, because of this. This defensive line for Syracuse delivers the ball on time. Ricci just doesn't get his head around quick enough. Has the defender Coley beat on the play. But because he doesn't get his head around, that ball gets on him quick. And it is a first down for Syracuse. So Bo Neal in the backfield with DeVito, Taj Harris. And a bucket of tight ends. Hackett and Luke Benson. This will be Bo Neal. And a timeout taken by Tim Lester with 3.36 to play. 30 second charge, timeout. Western Michigan, their first.
12 point lead for the Orange. Trying to get to two and two in year four with Dino Babers. Well, started out his career at Syracuse with a four and eight season. In the second season, they get the big win over Clemson here at the Loud House. And then four and eight after that. But last year, 10 wins, most since 2001. And the question is, how do they respond to that success? How do you, as a program, learn to deal with success? You saw the score, 104 to 26 in the first two games. Right. And Wes, it's really not easy, but it's one thing to be the underdog and to grind your way up to the top. It's harder to stay at the top. You know that Dino Babers is intent on trusting the process early in this season. DeVito sets it for Harris, who makes the catch, but is out of bounds. This is some kind of catch now by Taj Harris. Uh, that, that should be on every top ten in the world, even though it's out of bounds. Watch this. Is it? Back shoulder. Is it? One hand. It is. Yeah, foot right on the line. Wow, that is, that's really good, though. That's Odell Beckham good. Snagged it on the, the tip of the ball with his fingers. Some people will say that's sticky gloves, Wes. I say it's skill. Here's Neal working left side, and Neal will have the first down to the 16. And the clock continues to move. Well, I will say this, guys. I've been impressed today against a quality opponent in the Mid-American in Western Michigan. I think Syracuse is... Uh, Syracuse got a chance to have a nice year, and Mo Neal's going to cap win number two with a touchdown run. Fifty-one for the Orange today on Mo Neal's second TD run. Coming into this game. This Syracuse offense was 120th in the country in scoring 16.7 points per game. That is not a Dino Babers offense. So what do you do on a day where you're up against a high-flying, high-scoring Western Michigan team? Go out there and you ring up 51 points. Dino Babers is going to go into the locker room. A happy man after this one's over. Yep. Schmidt bangs home the point. Mo Neal, by the way, 127 yards and two scores now. A little pin and wrap. Mo Neal bounces it to the back side. Excellent cut by the senior running back who has shown today his versatility. The combination of him and Abdul Adams is going to be formidable in ACC play, and it looks like they're figuring out how to get them both involved. Well, it's interesting, and I was referring to the visit with Babers yesterday about understanding that you've only played three games, right? Yep. Yeah, you've had some disappointing losses, but. Roddy and Eric, I was impressed with the way he was processing kind of where his football team was, his personal expectation of what this team would be, and what they could learn from these last two weeks. And they've learned a lot. And Eric and Dino Babers talked about trusting the process, and it seems like they've done that here on the offensive and defensive side of the football. Yeah, he also spoke at length that this team needs to find their identity under Tommy DeVito. They knew who they were last year under Eric Dungy, and it's important for them to find their ground with the sophomore quarterback. Tommy DeVito has got a long, good future ahead of him at Syracuse, but they just need to find the rhythm with him, and they took the first step today with already 52 points on the board. Eric, I'm going to ask you this only because I know kind of the answer. In both your college and pro career, you had a lot of different quarterbacks, right? Correct. It's, it's different with every quarterback regardless of how sustainable the success is for a program, franchise, whatever the case may be. It absolutely is, and they had a ton of success last year with Eric Dungy as their quarterback, but he is a lot more mobile than Tommy DeVito. And DeVito rushed for 80-something yards today, and he had a, a, a great run on the ground early in the game, but you're seeing a lot of issues pop up with the offensive line this year that maybe Dungy made up for last year. So they're finding their ground right now and finding out what they're good at, and today they get a great win against a quality opponent in Western Michigan. They get another chance next week against Holy Cross to get their footing and really ramp up where they're at is an offense and as a football team yeah. heading into a tough ACC stretch. Well, that's a good point there because when they go back into league play, Roddy, it's going to count now. 
Oh, I mean, absolutely. the loss to Clemson aside last Saturday night, you know, had that happened, had the Orange won the game, it would have been an unbelievable statement after the loss to Maryland especially. But you took the loss, and as we said, there's one game difference. Now, whatever growth this team has to do has to occur today and next Saturday because then it gets real for them. It, it certainly does. And this guy knows how to navigate it. Dino Babers does. But this is a good stepping stone for this Syracuse team. And when you look at how they could have responded after the first two weeks, it could have been really tough. Middle of the field and intercepted. Eric Coley. With 2.29 to go, it's the fourth turnover of the day by the Broncos. Third interception on the season for John Wasink, and you got to take some chances when you're down as much as they are right now. Coley in the middle of the field just reads it, makes a great break on it. That ball hits him right in the sweet spot, right in the stomach. He's able to field it, and that's going to put the the punctuation at the end of a great sentence here for Syracuse. Yep. And on that play, Coley doesn't even need to retrieve from his safety spot. He makes that read flat footed because Western Michigan isn't going to get the time with the defensive ends that Syracuse has. They're not even going to get the time to go past him there. And Tommy DeVito will keep it to get the clock started with 222 to go. Najee Clayton stop. Jarvion Howard, the 213 pound sophomore, has come in as the running back. And now Clayton Welch will replace DeVito, who's had a fine day for the Orange. It's a nice little ovation from the crowd, hug from the strength coach. We get our first look at Clayton Welch, who uh, is just going to be responsible for getting everybody up, getting set, and then handing the ball off. Yeah. Here Clayton Welch is 6'5", 243 pounds, a fifth-year senior from Chico, California. And this is Howard, who sophomore from Columbia, Mississippi, which is the same hometown of the great Walter Payton. And that'll get us to the final 90 seconds of play here at the Dome. I think I was most impressed about with this Syracuse offense is you found some playmakers. Got Tommy DeVito involved in the run game. Tristan Jackson with an excellent game today. Saw him make a big play through the air. Also stiff arming, breaking a couple tackles up the sideline. We already knew what Mo Neal could do, but you're starting to see this offense develop. And that's part of it early in the season. I mean, you got to figure out who you are if you're Syracuse or any team early in the year. And it seems like this offense is really figuring it out. 50 seconds left. Dino Babers team goes to six and two in non-conference home games in his administration here in Central New York. Tough day for Tim Lester's team. Well, it was frustrating. It was sloppy early. You had turnovers, penalties that really cost you. And this was one of those games that you couldn't blink on offense. Mm. You, this was going to be a game where field goals weren't going to weren't going to win it for you. You got to score touchdowns, and Western Michigan blink before Syracuse did. Here is Jarvion Howard knocked out of bounds with 10 seconds to go. Picks up the first down, 18-yard run for Howard. Start asking if I can get a carry here late in the game. The success that these Syracuse running backs have had—that's a bit much, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so be tough I'd probably pop a hammy you'd have to wheel me off yeah. be all kinds of delays in the yeah. game the world famous I got one snap thing yep. yeah well fortunately the clock is going to run out before we reach drastic measures Syracuse really really turned it up today offensively and it's a 52 33 win for Dino Babers team over Tim Lester's Broncos